subscribe button and join us Monday through Friday live at 11 a.m. Central Time. And now, broadcasting from our homes, it's time for the number one gaming and entertainment podcast on God's green earth. It's time for Side Scrollers. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome on out to Side Scrollers on YouTube.com and Rumble.com. And today, a special Side Rollers.locals.com. What's going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday to you. Stuttering Craig. Man, oh, man, do we got a good one today, kids. I'll tell you what. As uh, controversy abound, I've actually had this one circled on our calendar for the past few days as we got a lot to dig into. And a lot of people have been asking about this. And i got to be honest, I don't know anything about it, which is why we have our special guest on today. But first, let's introduce the one, the only, straight from Guam, Labs. Yo! Guys, I have a new router. That means fast internet. Mmm. Just wow. little things in life. The little things, huh? Like fast internet. Dude, uh, I was like pulling my eyes out with the frustration in the last like month and a half. But now. It's like I feel like Thanos with like the Infinity Gauntlet. It's like, yes. Anyway, it's fine. <laughs> you, you've upgraded your internet and now ultimate. Now the internet will pay. Yeah. <laughs> my time oh. has come. Well, look, we're going we're going deep into something today. We're going deep into this uh, games workshop controversy, the Warhammer thing, and those are uh, those are two things I don't know anything about. Which is why we're bringing on superstar Warhammer God Arch. Hello, Arch. Hello. Thank you for having me again. Man, it's great to see you. I, I love just hearing you talk. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> Arch has joined us. So, so uh, look, we got a lot to talk about today. And uh, first off, how are you? How's the channel going? And, and uh, how is everything in life? I'm doing fine, thank you. The whole uh, Warhammer thing has been quite the busy uh, spot now, as I've been covering that. And uh, I did a video that released just just now, actually, uh, to coincide with this, to explain a bit wider around all of this, uh, which is about half an hour long. It took me a couple of days to write. Oh, wow. Awesome. Well, As, uh, this does run deep. Well, that's exciting to hear because there's a, uh, as somebody who knows nothing about this, uh, we, we talked about this before, but just so everybody knows, I don't know anything about Warhammer. I don't know anything about uh, Games Workshop. The only thing I know is when I hear you talk about it, right? So today, my role in our conversation, our deep dive into all this is to be the person who knows nothing about it, the sheer layman who who uh, who looks at this and is like, wow, that looks really uh, intimidating. So uh, that that's where we're going with this. But we'll get to that in just a little bit. First, slash side scrollers. We've been doing awesome over there the last few uh, few days as uh, growing. We had over a thousand, uh, almost seventeen hundred people watching yesterday over on Rumble, which was spectacular. So if you're new, make sure you guys hit the uh, follow button over there as we approach seven thousand followers. Would really appreciate that. We also have an X account where we could have found. Uh, well, you can find out all sorts of stuff, including Arch is going to be on the show. Find us over at x.com slash side scroller pod. We also have an Instagram account, don't we, Blabs? We do so follow us for memes and clips of the show. Otherwise, lots of violence and wedgies and whatever. I'm going to skin your nose. Yeah, okay. You're going to skin your nose. I love that. That's what I'm talking about. Skill. Jesus oh. Christ, I'm not going to skin it. Ugh. No, no, no. Stick with skin. It's, it sounds way, way worse. I'm going to skin your nose. There you yeah. Go. Skin your nose. Uh, you can also watch us over at kick at kick.com slash side scrollers. We can also find us over on Apple Podcasts as we continue to climb the charts on our way to the number one video game podcast in the world, specifically in America. <laughs> so find us over there. Link is in the description. If you want to listen to us instead of looking at our stupid, stupid faces, you can do that. Once again, Apple Podcasts and Spotify link down below. Uh, but the place you need to go today is sidescrollers.locals.com. That is our uh, our locals page. We've talked about it at length. Today, today is the day. It is Lord of the Rings Day, where I will be watching Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Rings, for the first time ever. Be watching the theatrical cut, and I'll be starting probably around 1.30 Central Time today. So in about two and a half hours after the show is over, uh, I have it tentatively sc uh, scheduled for that. I understand the movie's about three hours long, and uh, so we'll be finishing around 4.30. Now, here's the thing. The movie will be on screen, which is why we're doing it over on Locals, right? We're going to see how we're going to we're going to 
push it as much as we possibly can. So you guys watching over on Rumble, you guys watching over on Kick, you guys watching over on X, you guys watching over on YouTube, go to sidescrollers.locals.com become a member. Now it is free to become a member, but if you'd like to support, you absolutely can. In fact, I created a promo code for you. This is one thing that's actually kind of cool uh, over on Locals. You can create promo codes. Uh, you put in the promo code L-O-T-R for what, Blabs? For Lord of the Rings. That's right, Blabs, for Lord of the Rings. And you get a uh, free month of uh, support over there. So uh, join us over there and use the promo code L-O-T-R. And uh, you can support us for a month for free, which is great. So, and like I said, it is a free, uh, you know, free sign up over there. If you just want to watch the, uh, um, the uh, uh, viewing party over this Wednesday, next Wednesday, and the following Wednesday, they'll all be free. Uh, so you can just pop in. But if you want to support, you can over there. Um, if you want to watch over on YouTube, obviously we won't be able to do that, but we do have the show every single day, Monday through Friday here on YouTube. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and join us as we approach 76,000 subscribers over there, 75,900, which is great. Let's do our best to hit our goal of 700 likes and, of course, our goal of 25 memberships every single day. And man, oh man, we're off to a kick-ass start today as Nissan started us off strong with a $50 super chat saying, love the game music chat yesterday. You ever consider do a, a game OST member slash donation stream on locals? Just my take, but the uh, best years and genre for game OST was the late 90s racing games. Hmm. Romulus 3 from uh, Need for Speed, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit still bangs after 26 years later. Nissan, thank you so much for that. Um, that's actually a really good idea. And that's something that would be really, really fun. A, uh, I, I love video game music and I could, I could probably do a, a podcast every week about video game music, but uh, Arch, do you have a favorite, uh, favorite genre of, of music in the video game space or anything like that? In or? the video game space. Um, I am, uh, practically ignorant on musical matters. I am omnivorous and incapable I can listen to anything from Sabaton to Justin Bieber. No shit. Nice, nice. Well, I uh, wow. uh, probably lean towards the Sabaton side. You're you're truly diverse, though, in that in that yes. aspect. Then, so very diverse. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I think that's a great idea, Nissan, and thank you very much for the suggestion and uh, getting getting us kicked off with a uh, great start to the stream. The Hidden B came in and says, "Yo, Craig, got locals to watch." Uh, to watch you watch Lord of the Rings. Let's go. Thank you so much, The Hidden B. Yeah, head over to Locals at sidescrollers.locals.com. Once again, link is in the description. Really appreciate that. It'll give you guys plenty of heads up before the end of the show. Like, I was going to get... Um, Arch, have you ever seen the movie UHF before with Weird Al Yankovic? UFH? No, not that I can recall. Okay, so UHF, it's it's a movie that pretty much has inspired my entire adult life. Uh, it's, it's about uh, Weird Al becomes a... Um, he becomes the uh, station manager for a, for a really small TV station, like this uh, really tiny, no viewership TV station, and puts all this crazy programming in. And actually, Michael Richards, um, the uh, guy from Seinfeld, um, Kramer, is actually stars in it as like the he's a janitor turned TV star. Anyways, long story short, they have a telethon at the end of it, and. Uh, he, he goes, this is it. This is the last minute when it's time for them to donate. Well, this is it. This is the last minute for people to uh, to head over to Locals, which is great. So I was going to get that clip, and I totally forgot about that today. Anyways, uh, we sh that'd be a fun movie for you to watch because there's so many like 80s references that, you pro that would probably just fly right over your head uh, from movies from like 1988. It's great. It'd be fun to watch. Um, probably. I don't know. I'll, I'll see if I can find it. I, th I think I think overseas it was called like the Vidiots from UHF or something. Just just search like UA, just search like Weird Al movie. I think you you dig it. Um, Dark Resurrect came in with the twenty dollars super chat spectacular. Says Squeak and Hail Arch, our Lord and Savior, the Keeper of Gates, Defender of Grimdark, Breeder of Gibbs. Sorry, Craig, I must meme. I don't know what any of that meant, what? but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Rimdog came in and says, Arch, so glad you continued your April Fool's theme this year. Hope it continues. All the best. Thank you. What was your April Fool's thing? Uh, I do My Little Pony lore. Oh, awesome. No way. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's awesome. uh, are you a brony, Arch? 
You know, uh, the more and more shit entertainment gets uh, produced in the current year, the more and more I warm to My Little Pony. <laughs> Sparkle Dash and all that nonsense. Wait, oh, how do you God. know about My Little Pony, Craig? Oh, dude, come on. Like the I'm so do- much. First, you know all the Bluey Lord. Now you know My Little Pony. Okay. Like, I don't know any of this stuff. First, you need to stop mm-hmm. because Bluey is here and My Little Pony's here, right? Bluey is God tier cartoon. My Little Pony is like meme, okay? In the in the early 2010s, the My Little Pony thing was massive, like Sparkle Dash. Yeah, I remember seeing in commercials. It's huge, yeah. So it was very big, and the Brony scene, which are like bros who are into the pony scene. See, it's called Brony. Get it, right? My Little Pony. Uh, it was kind of a, I don't know. It was like a meme for a long time. I'm assuming and- you know all this because you have kids, and not just because you watch it on YouTube and stuff. No, 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 no. No, it's just like. I, I, because I worked with people who were not necessarily in the scene, but <laughs> Ch- Ch- I was like, he has kids, blabs. <laughs> and I was like, watch, you watch, you watch. No, 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 no. I mean, I, I worked with people who were kids pretty much, and <laughs> they, they were into the, they weren't necessarily into the, into the brony gotcha, scene, Jack. but, but we all made fun of the brony scenes. But now, now I would be seen as non inclusive if I made fun of the bronies, you know? So whatever, you know. Oh, my. Do you know the brony scene, Arch? You ever heard of the I know brony? more about it now than I used to. <laughs> there's a, there's a fair bit of deep law there. Um, unironically, it actually went through its own little cancellation period uh, because it used to be quite closely connected to its fans, like stuff used to be back in the day, right? There was yeah. a smaller barrier between entertainment and the viewers. Mm-hmm. And so the viewers would actually name some of the ponies. One of them they named Derpy because she had weird eyes. And yes. they actually named her Derpy in one episode. And that episode was afterwards censored because that would be offensive today to call a pony Derpy. Derpy. Yes. yes. Derpy. I get called Derpy every day of my life. I should. <laughs> everyone's getting censored now. Well, now it's a hate crime, so you can see. <laughs> yes. That's right. Now, now it's a hate crime. Because <laughs> people, everyone lost their sense of humor because we all have to. You know, it's funny. I saw, uh, who was it? I think it was, it was uh, Rogue Attraction. Who, on on YouTube, who uh, did some stuff with um, geeks and gamers? I don't think he does stuff with them now. But Rogue Attraction, he goes to like these theme parks, right? And uh, he put a screenshot of his analytics on uh, his his demographic breakdown on YouTube, and it was like sixty seven percent male, twenty uh, whatever the rest of it was female, and point z point three percent like nondescript. And I was like. I bet that 0.3% is the loudest uh, loudest part of your audience, <laughs> <laughs> most likely. Um, anyways, yeah, 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 it's great stuff. John came in, says, for Arch, would it be wrong to say that the ones defending fem stodies and owning the chuds are just agents of slainish? What you, <laughs> lots of rainbow slash. What, what is that? Slainish? Did I say that right? Slanish. Slanish. Okay. The god of excess and deviancy. Mm, see, this is going to be a great conversation. I can already tell. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. Um, Mercenary says, did you skip the Streamlabs donos from yesterday? Uh, if we did, not on purpose. Um, thank you, Mercenary. Appreciate that. Uh, Ron says, hey, found the marble and the oatmeal. prize. <laughs> get a drink from the fire hose. That's a reference to UHF. That's right. Mage Leader says, sad to see uh, GW copycatting Catalyst Game Labs uh, with the blocking campaign. Battletech and Warhammer are up against the same flock of ghouls. Thanks, Mage Leader. Mad Hatter says, Arch, do you think Games Work uh, Dame, Games Woke Shop is trying to distract from this fiasco by soft announcing Emperor's Children yesterday? Ah, uh, who knows? Like, they, they are getting a lot of flack for this um, on both sides because the Custodes Codex also turned out to be actually kind of garbage. So they're kind of taking flack from all sides now. And I wouldn't be surprised if the men upstairs were calling too uh, because they also saw a little bit of a dip in their stock prices that came out of nowhere on a trading day. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, it's quite hot in the GW offices right now. The men upstairs, huh? <laughs> yep. Knock them down. Hey, you better get them sales up. Do it. Uh, the Baron came in, says Arch did nothing wrong. Thanks, the Baron. Marks of Marks Man. 
of 117B says, Barch, any more My Little Pony Heart of Iron streams? <laughs> Very soon. Yes, soon. All right. I am the Icarus came in, says the Strider soundtrack on Sega Genesis is underrated. Oh, you're telling me that's a great soundtrack. Uh, they also randomly rip off State Farm as their jingle for a couple seconds in, in one song. I don't think that the Strider soundtrack is ripping off <laughs> the State Farm is their <laughs> from 1990. Yes. But um, even State Farm rips themselves off because they replaced Jake with another Jake. So. You know what's funny about that Jake from State Farm thing? Khakis. No, 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 no. What's funny about the Jake from State... Uh, Arch, do you know who Jake from State Farm is? Is he a thing over in the UK? No idea. Okay. And I'm not in the UK. Where, where are you? Good I'm me, Norwegian. Greg. Oh, that's, that's you right. You do I this every it. time. You are the worst <laughs> host ever. Listen, I am so sorry about him. You you have to excuse him. He's from... Uh, he, he's a little slow up there. I'm sorry. He doesn't know about any other country except Texas. He thinks Texas is his own country, okay? So, mm. what, Craig? What are you trying to say? Arch, Arch look, look. The skateboard, the skateboard represents Texas, right? And everywhere else represents Europe. <laughs> so ev Japan, it's in Europe. Australia, it's in Europe. It's all in Europe. Norwegian, I think, is in Europe. I don't know. Or no, 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 Listen, it's all... You make me no, want to fill this with alcohol, Craig. Nothing would make me happier, Black. <laughs> you would you want me to be drunk on stream one day? Like, <laughs> My gosh, that'd be spectacular. Anyway, Arch, I apologize. No worries. Damn, I'm, I'm an idiot. Uh, Sujad came in and says, whatever happened to 8-Bit Mickey? 8 -bit Mickey? Uh, I remember back in the day you guys had some great chemistry. Yeah, Mickey, um, he got fired. Or actually, no, not, not that's not what happened. He went behind my back to go with Tom to the Game Heroes uh, long, 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 like 15 years ago. And uh, that's what happened to him. So, um, yeah, it was great. Uh, Mark and Mankin says, Arch, is Warhammer fall, is Warhammer fall due to us not breeding kibs? Almost certainly. Blabs the tower chart came in and says, Craig gave Frank Gore a stroke so his Lord of the Rings stream wouldn't have to compete with the nerd Roddick Nooner. Like, uh, I like violence and testicles. Yeah. Um, what? What's it say? Tentacles, I know, but I'm okay, going to keep going with tentacles. Okay, I know. Oh <laughs> uh, I did not give, uh, by the way, I, I don't know if you guys heard, but Chris Gore did have a, a, a minor stroke uh, over the uh, Vegas meetup, and uh, that was publicly put out yesterday. So uh, obviously we wish Chris all the luck in, in recovery, in a fast recovery. Um, but, you know, I knew about that privately. I just didn't say anything publicly, but... Uh, it's a you know pretty major medical thing. We want to make sure you know everyone's taken care of and everything. So, um, Gavin came in and says, "I have a question, Craig. Is taking us back worth it? Part of me feels like uh, like it screams scam. And I've been playing video games since I was six, and I'm 26 now. Uh, now, also, I have a uh, a crappy week. Uh, also, I have a crappy week. Any advice, uh, Gavin?" Uh, is Take Games Back worth it? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm I'm updating things over at TakeGamesBack.com. Uh, I actually just put put a post up yesterday. Uh, as of yesterday, I, I hired a uh, a uh, company to rework the website. And um, no, obviously, I, I've devoted probably close to 130 hours over the past month to Take Games Back. So. If it's a scam, you're yeah, I'm the one getting scammed because <laughs> I'm the one busting my ass to make it work. Uh, as far as having some um, uh, any any advice, hey man, it's gonna get better. There you go, Gavin. Um, so yeah, head to takegamesback.com. Uh, Danny Boy says uh, custodes nerfed. Am I, am I saying custod custodies? Custodies, yes. Custodies nerfed to the ground once women join. Thanks, Danny Boy. Appreciate that. Massive Doge says, question to Arch. Has uh, Sweet Fat Otaku ever changed slash sweet, corrupted? Sweet Fat? Sweet fat oh, sorry, sorry, Sweet Fat, sorry. Has <laughs> Dev... Sure. I think he's gay for you, Dev. I love Dev. <laughs> has, has Dev ever changed slash corrupted any of your opinion? Mm, Dev is usually at the end of the slippery slope that is Arch. Rather than the other side around. I love it. All right, we got a lot of... Uh, 
a lot of super chats. We're going to get to all those in just a little bit. I do want to point out Elite Neo says, would you would you want me to be drunk on stream one day? Yes. Maybe. Okay. maybe, maybe I don't one day get day drunk. I don't get day drunk. But I have when I was younger. Not anymore. I'm an adult now. So can't. But if you ever want to see me drunk, you should, you know, when I, Wicked and I stream together. Most of the time we usually have alcohol. Just saying. Blabs, can we do a special late night stream? Why just get drunk? No, yeah. that'd be terrible. What if I say something stupid? You won't say anything stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we will get to every single super chat before the end of the show, but we got a lot to talk about today, guys. Thank you very much for your support. Um, and uh, let's see, what else? Do we got anything that else? Oh, you know, what? I do want to remind everybody one last thing. We have. Uh, our side scrollers all star t shirt available right now. If I can scroll to it and find it, it's right there. So uh, head on over. You can find the link in the description. It's a baseball shirt. Arch, mm. you, do you know anything about baseball, Arch? <laughs> I know that it never ends, apparently. Uh, it's about, you know, games are about two and a half hours long now. They've shortened the games. So, but uh, yeah, you can go pick it up right there uh, and link in the, in the description. Really appreciate that. All right. Uh, with that said, we we do have a lot to talk about today, so let's get into it. Uh, Blabs, first, tell us all about today in video game Oh, yes. Yeah. So I'm actually excited for this one. So as you didn't know, April 17th, a video game called Argus was released 38 years ago. What can but you tell us about Argus? I honestly don't know anything about Argus. It was released in Japan. So <laughs> Final Fantasy was also released 21 years ago. But the one that I'm excited about is Brain Age that was released 18 years ago for the Nintendo DS. Now, Brain Age was like everywhere. Do you remember that? It was on the TVs. It was on sale at Costco. It was everywhere. So I want to know, chat, did you guys ever play Brain Age? Because honestly, I didn't. I had similar games to it, or maybe I even had it. I really can't remember. But did you ever play it? Probably not, Craig, because you don't even know where Arch comes from. So, no, I played Brain Age. I played the shit out of Brain Age. Oh, did you? Hell yeah, I played Brain Age. So uh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> you funny as shit, uh, Arch. Did you play Brain Age? No, but I do remember it being everywhere. I've always been intelligent. I've never had to uh, work on it. <laughs> <laughs> Slap! <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, you know, I, I wonder how many games that sold. Let me do a quick, quick look, real fast. Uh, Brain that Age. That was the shit on Nintendo DS. I honestly, Nintendo DS was so fun. They had that professor, Professor Layton series that required you to use the big brain too. I played most of those. I remember being so hooked on one game, and then the ending was absolute shit. It went so lazy and cheap, and I was like, I did all this for that, and I got really mad. And I think that was probably one of the last times I ever played Professor Layton. The first two games in the series combined to sell 33 million copies. Wow. Oh, geez, Louise. Well, Brain Age, eight, what, 18 years ago? Holy yeah. moly, 18 years ago. That's crazy. It's not wild. In two years, it'll be 20. That's 18 plus two, Craig. If I can just sell 33 million of anything, I would just stop. I'd just be like, I'm good. And then just go live in an island you somewhere. You could be like one of those streamers who sells like bath water or something try doing like your hairs on ebay no no if i'm going to sell something i'm going to sell something uh really good like supplements blabs <laughs> oh man I, I just announced that on monday uh anyways links to that in the description they, it is not bath water <laughs> it's not his hair either <laughs> All right, let's get into it. It's time for my favorite segment, your favorite segment, everybody in the world's favorite segment. It's time for hard news. Hard news. Yeehaw! All righty. We got a lot to talk about today, and uh, Blabs wanted to talk about... <laughs> this is always so much fun to see what Blabs wants to start start the show talking about. <laughs> Listen, Arch, we got a lot of really important things happening in the gaming and entertainment space. Um, but this is not one of them. Uh, have you ever had Crocs before, Arch? You, you know Crocs, the shoes? Uh, no, uh, but we know Norwegians are famous for wearing Crocs with uh, socks in them whenever we Thank go you. to the southern continents. I wear Jesus sandals right now, and I have socks on. They're big in socks, though. Not Crocs. I hate Crocs, actually. Well, okay, the Crocs and socks thing is kind of a weird deal, just saying. 
You don't like even my... know what countries exist, Craig. You can't say what's weird and not. Sure, I can. And you know what's also also weird is this crossover we're going to talk about. Uh, Arch, do you have Pringles in the Norwegian lands? Yes. Yes, we do. Okay. Did you ever expect to see a Pringles Crocs crossover? Here we are. Well, this is the world. Kind of taste like feet, so <laughs> maybe. I got to be honest. They're funny looking. They're pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> you got the uh, the Pringles mustache as your as your uh, little whatever these things are. I guess the straps. Yeah, well, they can go in the back too for uh, more support. You know, so it keeps your foot locked in. You know, Elite Neo coming in. Prox. What is the <laughs> best? Like, what what would these be called? Prox. Kringles. I don't know. It's a. I like anyways, Kringles better. But, yeah. Yeah. It's the thing now. How much would you pay for these, Flabs? I wouldn't pay for them. I would never wear them. They're not even comfortable. I don't understand why people are obsessed with Crocs. They're not comfy. They have Art, shit support. Art, would you ever wear uh, Pringles Crocs? I've been on the internet for long enough to the point where I would ask to be paid for this now. <laughs> Wait, what is the what is the what is the food item that you like that you personally? Arch would like to see crossed over with Crocs. Small Hova. You, the brand affinity? Well, I don't think Small Hova is a brand, but I would like to see it crossed over with Crocs. What, uh, is, what is this again? I'm sorry. Uh, Small Hova is a traditional Norwegian dish, which is a uh, boiled sheep's head, complete with eyes. Uh... Does it taste good? Well, yeah, it's just lamb basically so yeah yeah but lamb in america is terrible compared to like lamb elsewhere so we can't really judge how do you the spell? primary drawback is uh is, is the fact that your food is looking at you as you eat it you yeah, know hard pass bro mm -mm. <laughs> wait wait what is it called small hoover can you spell I'll, it please i'll give you a picture of it though i okay. don't know if it's youtube safe so bear that in mind because it is the decapitation. Oh, no! <laughs> I opened the private shit! Yep. <laughs> it is a stare right at you. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> oh, no! Arch, have you... And this... I, I mean, I'm very intrigued by this. Have you actually done the deed and taken that sheep and slap that you know decapitated it have you done that or you just have you just have you, Do you just... understand how sheep are euthanized by chance well i mean apparently in norway you, just... the head go, you, you mash force. their brain Arch, you i have brain? eaten small hova once uh, as a joke and it, it it's tasty enough it's it's just basically sheep meat uh but it, it is um it, it is an experience definitely do you eat the eyeballs? Uh, yes, yeah, some people swear that the eyeballs are the best part. They're the weird people. They're like, oh, you gotta have the eyeballs. It's so squishy. Um, what is what is this? What is this right here? That's gravy, duh. Yeah, but what, uh, what, what, that's what? just fat, rendered fat. <laughs> My Which God. You pour on top of it. What, you just pour it right on top of the dead head? Yes. All right, man. Hey, I'm going to tell you right now, y'all are savages. I want to go outside and play in the fresh air. <laughs> Man, y'all are done today. Man, we are, listen, we get, here in America, we have like, we have, you know, wonderful meat and chicken. You know, they, like, they do sell, uh, you know, not, not sheep's head, but I have seen, um, you know, like, cow's head and stuff sold in, in stores. I've seen chicken feet. Yeah, chicken feet. I went to school with a, a couple of people who are from China. And you walk into the kitchen, because we had kitchens in our dormitory, and they would just have feet boiling in a pot of water. And you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, it'd be weird, man. <laughs> I don't understand how chicken feet can be tasty. Like, oh, no, thank you. But whatever, to each their own. <laughs> Arch, what's the, what's the weirdest thing that you've ever had? See, by American standards, probably, hmm, hmm. 
we have another um, funny fee, uh, funny feet, food stuff. That's the English word uh, here in Norway. It's fish that is deliberately left outside to rot, uh, and then it becomes food once it has sufficiently rotted away. <laughs> which, which, based off what you just said, makes zero sense at all, <laughs> right? <laughs> So we're going to leave this fish out. We're going to let it rot. Then we're going to eat it, which defeats yep. the purpose of rotting, right? Because rotting means it's spoiling. I don't know. It's, yeah. I saw, I saw, uh, you ever seen the show every, uh, what is it? Somebody Feed Phil before? It's on Netflix. Anyways, no, I have not. He he went to, I think he went to, to Norway and they had, uh, he kind of talked about that. You know, that's that's how I was exposed to that. Weirdest thing I ever ate was seal. I had some seal, seal. in Greenland. That is weird. Yes. It was it was disgusting. It was like the best way I could describe it was if you've ever had like a good pot roast, well, leave it in the leave it in there in the pot roast uh, like cooking for another like two days. It was like really stringy and gross and tough. That that's what seal tastes like, just for for reference. I'm really That's glad I had salami for breakfast. I didn't have to worry about any of this weird food. You're the most gourmet. Seal would actually ever. be tasty. Seal? Yeah, I'd th I, I would think that'd be tasty, but uh, I took a picture ah. with a, a headless yeah. sea lion once. Does that count? He was dead, obviously. I found him on the beach. And I was like, <laughs> only, only if you then ate it. I guess. I did not know. Mm -mm. You just take a big old spoon and just go right yeah, into the. No carefully. way! I'm assuming a shark ate him. All bit right. his head off. Well, you would be mentally ill if you did that. Hey, speaking of mentally ill, let's go to our next story. <laughs> um, Arch, do you remember a month, maybe two months ago, when the big trend on TikTok was the whole NPC trend where people would be like, oh, thanks for the heart. Oh, thanks for the heart. And they'd act like they were NPCs from uh, a video game. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. And on the one hand, I'm, I'm genuinely impressed by some of their, uh, like, motor skills and ability to recreate the motions on the other i also wonder what this says about our civilization that's a wonderful point wonderful point um but apparently it's uh it's drying up it's been you know it was like a very short window and some people made like super bank while doing it on uh on tiktok but hey if something's working keep on going and that's what this guy has done this is the uh npc miles morales he, I guess he acts like he's Miles Morales from Spider-Man. And uh, he's been doing this for the better part of a couple months. And he just goes out to random spots, sets up his camera, and, and acts like an NPC in, in, like, in real life. And apparently nobody sent him anything for several minutes. And he got very upset about it. And uh, he broke character. There's 11,000 people in here. There's 11,000 fucking people in here. And you guys are not tapping the screen, okay? Make sure that you're tapping the screen. There's 11,000 people in here. There's 11,000 fucking people in here, okay? Tap the goddamn screen, okay? Tap the goddamn screen. Okay, you see this button right here? Press the fucking button, okay? Press the fucking button. <laughs> so, definitely not unhinged. And then, within three seconds... Thanks, Safala. You guys are amazing. <laughs> it just goes right back into it. He's definitely needing money for his, like, meth addiction or something. Like, I need the money, tap it! It's, it's so sad. It's so sad to see that. See, see him. Like, you can tell at the start where he's like, I gotta say something. I gotta say something. I gotta get this. Then, he, then he's able just to kind of revert back to it. Hey, thanks for the follow. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it reminds me of that song when you had a bad day? Take one down. <laughs> right. You right. had a bad day. That's him. <laughs> Has uh, Arch, what are your what are your thoughts on uh, on just the NPC side of things? And uh, have you ever seen somebody? I don't know. Like, I would just love to hear your thoughts on the state of society where people are number one making bank, acting like they're a uh, NPC, a computer character that doesn't. That's a non-playable character, and uh, and then him just kind of flipping. <laughs> what are your thoughts on all that? Well, 
on the one hand, I, again, like the the people that do it really well do it really well. Like they they have you have you seen that uh, video there? There's a video about a Korean actress who does the motions for like Korean anime games. Have you have you seen that? No. Uh, oh god, I don't think I can find it on the drop of a hat. That's okay. That's crazy. Uh, but like, because in anime, etc., you have completely different motions than in real life, so you need to mm -hmm. move and think about it in a completely different way, right? Um, and when they do that perfectly, it looks really. What's the word for it? Like uncanny valley esque, if you get my drift. Sure. Like. It's it scratches a bit of your brain as you look at it and go like that's weird. So I can see the attraction, but at the same time, I also do think that you can only do that for so long. And clearly, this guy's been doing it for a little bit too long, apparently. Right, <laughs> kind of kind of broke. Uh, um, there was also one rather famous one of a, uh, a French woman, I think, a black French woman who was doing this and interrupted it to yell at her child. <laughs> <laughs> so. Somewhere there's a child just looking at her, his mother doing this, and the child's just like, Mom, why? Right. And she just starts berating the child. Mommy is working. It's like, oh. <laughs> Mom's working. Pay attention. Got to gotta make the, that bread. The definition of labor has uh, extended significantly. <laughs> it has changed, for sure. For sure. Well, but hey, again, as you said, like if people are willing to pay for it, there's a market. So good, good luck. Hey, good luck to Miles Morales in PC. Hope, hopefully, it all all comes together. All right, let's um let's go move on to the to the big topic today. Let's 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 just dig into this this Warhammer Games Workshop stuff. We, we're gonna I feel like we're gonna go deep into this and that's the whole idea of this show. So if you guys are tuning in, appreciate y'all being here. Uh if you're new, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. We are live Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Central Time here on YouTube, Rumble, Kick, and Locals. And of course over on X as well, which you know has been great. All right. Um, my role here is to be the noob because that is what I am when it comes to Warhammer and Games Workshop. So let's start here, Arch. Give me a brief overview, like a TLDR of Warhammer 40K and the overall idea of what this thing is. Okay. Um, let's see. Warhammer 40k, as you, you probably know now, is a miniature tabletop war game where you use little plastic models to play out Bakshin, uh, Bakshin's battles set in the far-flung future of the 41st millennium. That's like the, uh, the core underlying idea. It was started in 1987 and was actually intended as a knockoff of Warhammer Fantasy, which was actually way more popular then, which was a knockoff of Lord of the Rings in essence. <laughs> It has grown significantly since then and has grown into a its own thing and a very unique owned thing as well that has grown enormously in the last about four or five odd years. Um, where it was always like sort of pseudo popular, but in 2020 it grew like 10 times and has now become on the verge of becoming one of the largest British like entertainment institutions. Uh, to the point where the creator and founder of Games Workshop, the company, was knighted for his wow. role in creating the company. Wow! So this is seen as a, as a um, I, this is this is, I mean, it's a worldwide thing, very much worldwide. Yes. But it, but it started, you said, in the UK. Yes, in the UK. Okay, okay. and uh, it's it's one of the very 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 few hobby things that actually has brick and mortar stores anymore dedicated games workshop stores they've got hundreds of these all across the globe and that's kind of where it got started because they were willing to put so much money into making this an institution because like, nobody else has stores bolt action doesn't have stores or anything like that you know uh, so it became a, uh, a game franchise in its own right and it basically took over the entire wargaming scene. Whereas today, Wargaming is 40K. And if anything, you spin off into other things from 40K. It's kind of become the, the base, baseline mainstream in Wargaming. So what is it about um, 40K that drew you to it? 
my grandmother, <laughs> of all things. Uh, she went to the toy store and she found a book which had lots of pretty colors in it. And she's like, oh, my grandchild likes uh, English words. This looks appealing. And it was the Chaos Dwarf Warhammer Fantasy Codex. Uh, that was my first entry into uh, Warhammer and eventually in 40K. A uh, very brutal se setting, which my uh, grandmother probably would not have picked up to me at uh, 10 years of age at the time. <laughs> but she had no idea, nor did the toy store have any idea what it was. So there you go. So this is a, uh, okay, so it's a tabletop game. You, you have the little miniatures, right? Is that, is that mm -hmm. the idea? Like these, you got these guys type of, these little guys. Yeah, this isn't a, yep. I don't, this, yeah, this isn't like a Warhammer a guy. Combat wheelchair. Yeah, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is a, I, I, maybe this is, I don't remember what this is, but I got the, uh, I got the, uh, the disability wheelchair folks, which, so is this, can you find these guys in Warhammer as well? Like disability wheelchair folks? Like you can find models like it. The mm -hmm. uh, the essence is the little uh, miniatures which you purchase, assemble, glue them together, and then you paint them yourself. And then you can go and actually do battle with them using rule sets which are referred to as codexes. Okay, so you go in and you 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 buy them. You fight your friends. Yep. Is that the idea? Or you go to the local Games Workshop store and set up games there. Cool. Okay, and. Uh... We're gonna we're gonna skip a whole lot here, right? So the, there's tremendous growth from the '80s. You said from '87 all the way up until now in 2020 or so, it pops off. It becomes yep. a little more mainstream. I'd say you, you said enormously, like right. uh, partially COVID. COVID was huge because it meant that people had a lot of time inside to do things like painting and collecting and wargaming. Mm -hmm. And also, there is a suspicion because uh, a couple of companies you might have heard of, BlackRock and Vanguard. Ah now own 8% of Games Workshop stock. When did and that it wouldn't happen? surprise me if that happened around the same time as it took off. I was going to say, do, you, do we have uh, any dates as to when they they went into Games Workshop and they, uh, they purchased that percentage of the company? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, I don't think they've announced it, but they are listed on their site right now as investors. And they own how much? What, what percentage of the company? About eight nine percent, the two of them. Between the two, or or uh, between each? the two. Okay, so almost ten percent of the company, uh, which yep. is which is a, uh, it, it doesn't sound like a lot, but bear in mind these are companies that control trillions of dollars combined. Like if if you're a company and they come to you and tell you to do something, you probably just do it. Okay, so we have uh, these two companies getting involved and. That is where we're kind of at now, correct? So over the last... I found you a, a picture there, a quick link, if you can bring that up. Sure. Uh, and you select the, uh, the max time period for the stock prices. Uh, there you will see the enormous jump around like 2016, and then an even bigger jump at uh, 2020. I'll get that pulled up real quick. Yeah. Ah, yes, that's the BlackRock and Vanguard one you brought up there. I got your blabs. There you go. Yeah. You, you can see an, a, a pretty hefty jump there that begins in 2015 and then explodes in 2020 or 2019. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so at the tail end, it really, I mean, it, it really starts escalating in 2016, as you said. But for mm -hmm. the most part, this is, a, so this is a publicly traded company going back to 1995. And yep. It is old. Yeah, it's stayed level for, I mean, for the better part of two decades. And, you know, saw some growth, right? But then it then it really popped off. Holy moly, that's insane to see how much yes. that goes. That's crazy. And it's seen its ups. And, so what happened here? What happened between, uh, I guess, 2021, September 2021 and uh, October 2022? Why was there this giant dip? The end of the COVID boost, uh, in large parts. Okay. As uh, the company was founded in 1983, it's very old. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you say, like they were beginning to scratch on the doors of the mainstream uh, that they saw the little growth. And then COVID saw an enormous boost. And then, of course, eventually the COVID sales began to fall off. The investors started to back off a little bit. And then we have another enormous boost. So uh, BlackRock Vanguard probably came in 
either in 2022 or in 2020, depending on how visionary they were being. Yeah, they own, here's BlackRock, 6.56% and Vanguard, 4.94%. So even more than eight now, which is crazy. And there's yeah, JP Morgan down there. Interesting. Well, chat was saying, you know, 11, uh, 11%, you know, which is a pretty good chunk of uh, a company, especially enough to to make a decision or two when it comes to uh, things. So, okay, so that we're fast forwarding now. We uh, we're in 2024, and this is you said this started in 1983. Yeah, um, developed a very hardcore audience over the last 40 years. Um, that is built all around community, literally going to places and you know physical locations, very unique. And getting together with friends, meeting new friends, competing against each other, playing against each other, um, and more or less building a community. Um, the pushback that I see now is that they have uh, now there's female characters for the first time with this. Well, there there have always been female characters, actually. That's okay. the thing. Uh, 40k has never been particularly exclusionary other than it costs an arm and a leg to play the game Games Workshop has never bought anyone from their shops uh, so long as you're willing to sell a kidney to pay them for their plastic crack <laughs> uh, we've, we've even had armies of all female characters before the Sisters of Battle and uh, the Sisters of Silence as well, as well as male armies in fact, all male armies or all female armies are a rarity as most of the species in 40k uh, well, the universe sucks so much that most don't really have the luxury to recruit only one gender. Uh, but the custodies were an all-female, an all-female, an all-male force. That's why the sudden addition of a female character to it is very weird. Just like if you suddenly had a male Sisters of Battle, for example, it would just be crazy. Okay, so that's the difference, is that the custodies throughout their entire history have been male and now yes. they're saying there are females and there's always been females is that is that accurate correct uh because and i think that's the thing that's really important to point out as well the fact that they claim that they've always been around now because if they were simply retconning it you know all settings have retcons all red set settings have changed in lore on occasion stuff like that so if they simply came out and said okay we're changing this because you know blackrock owns us at this point all right, fair enough. But no, instead they say, it's always been this way. That's very... How do I put it? At least if you're being honest, then okay, you made this decision for external purposes. All right, sucky, but okay. But now you're lying about it. That's weird. So Why would you, why would you do that? So you as, as a fan and, and millions of other people across, across the world... Uh, feel like you're getting gaslit, more or less. Definitely. Like, this is some unironic 1984 stuff. Like, we have always been at war with East Asia that have always been female custodies. Right. So, and that that's where the pushback comes from this. And it, it's kind of like, no, 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 no. That sky is red, and it's always been red, mm -hmm. even though you're looking up there and you see that it's blue. Yes. Okay. Uh, and again... We this is in the source material. Like Games Workshop's own law books have stated there are only male custodies multiple times. So then see the same company go, no, no, no. Uh we've been wrong for the last 20 years. It's very weird. Is this the uh is this one of the images that you sent to us? Uh that we, should we pull up one of these images here? Um, yes, the uh, the first one is the part of the law blurb where they introduce the female custodies. So this is the one where they have a custodian and they give her she pronouns. So this is the female custodies. Okay, and when did this take place? Uh, this is the one that happened just now, the last few days. Okay. And, and the, the, custodian... uh, the other picture that I sent you is the uh, source book uh, where they say here that the custodians all the way at the top are the infant sons of the noble houses of Terra. Hence, hence being the, male. Uh, right. Yes. And this is one of several mentions uh, all the way back to the original where they say specifically that these men custodians never leave Terra. So I'm going to read this. It says, it is known that all custodians begin their lives as the infant sons of the noble houses of Terra. 
It is a mark of incredible prestige to, sur to surrender one's child to this most glorious of callings within the Imperium. And many noble, uh, no, uh, notable clans amongst the Terran uh, arist arist aristocracy have willingly given up their most entire generations of newborn sons to earn it. So this is a, mm -hmm. so the custodians. It, this is a very prestigious honor for for families to put their uh, their sons into. Absolutely. They are the uh, elite bodyguards of the God Emperor of Humanity. So there's pretty much no more prestigious calling. Wait, wait, say, say that one more time. I just want you to repeat that. They're the what? The elite bodyguards of the God Emperor of Humanity. The, the elite bodyguard guard of the God Emperor of Humanity. Did I say that correctly? Correct. That's the most badass thing I've ever said in my life. I'm just going to say right now, that is absolutely amazing. Um, okay. Okay. So, so there is lore here. The story says that these are sons and, uh, let's go over to, to Grums now. Cause Grum, Grums has been big on everything that's been happening here. Grums says, uh, Warhammer 40 K is retconning lore for wokeness. Warhammer custodians is blowing up in the community. Uh, Oceana has always been at war <laughs> with East Asia. One look Great at the major like, I'm sorry. Great minds think alike. Yes. Uh, ESG operates indirectly, but BlackRock and Vanguard operate directly when they own shares right here. So uh, there's a tweet from the actual Warhammer, you know, X handle it says in regards to female mm -hmm. custodians, there have always been female custodians since the first of the 10,000 were created. Is this right? Okay, this is right here. And they're including this. It is known that all custodians begin their lives as the infant. Oh, and this is the response here, I guess, right here. Yep. So I, I guess you you have to feel confused when it comes to comes to this. And uh have there ever been I'm I'm imagining when you when you go out and you buy, you know, your your little figurines. Is that am I using the correct terminology there? Figurines or is figurines, there a, miniatures, okay. models. Okay. So when you go, we'll say models. When you go out and buy a model, has there ever been a female custodian that you could buy? No, uh, there has never been a female custodies model. There has never been a female custodies in the art, and there has never been a female custodies mentioned in the lore in the um, well, thirty years that the custodies have been referred to. Okay, so never once, and that's why people are like, "What the hell are you talking about?" Right? Okay, um, are you familiar with Nick Davis? This person. This uh, this person over uh, on X, he worked for Games old, Workshop. Old school GW employee, I believe. Yes. I don't know if you saw his his post about this, um, and I, but I wanted to read through this because I worked for Games Workshop for a very specific part of part of its history. I started in the mail order trolls and worked my way up in the studio, finishing finishing out my career with GW, working on White Dwarf magazine. UK and then US edition. I'm a, is that like the official magazine? Yep, that's the hobby magazine. Okay. During my time at the company, especially during my white dwarf years, I had one mission. I wanted to share the joy of war of the Warhammer hobby uh, gave me to lift up the that mystic veil and show uh, who you, the average gamer like me, could participate no matter no matter your skill level. In short, some of the mystery out of of what is dry dry brushing. I don't, what is dry brushing? Painting technique. Okay, figured as much. Uh, I like to think I mostly succeeded in that mission, and I am and I am heartened when I hear uh, from now from now vets in the hobby who cite me as a positive influence. The hobby, as I like to call it, is supposed to be fun, a, a uniting force between gamers to create friendships, a social function. I'm guessing um, something to be shared and enjo uh, enjoyed and shared. You never were supposed to build silos of lore uh, because the idea, the very idea, the Warhammer and Warhammer 40K universe was the history was so, uh, was the history was so, convol was so convoluted and fragmented that there was no such thing as fact. Everything was supposed to contradict. That was the purpose. That being said, I'm overjoyed seeing the hobby that once gave me a means to live being so inclusive, seeing female LGBTQ plus gamers and seeing them represented at the highest level of GW toy soldiers is pure joy. I love it. 
Uh, I wish I had seen more of it during my time at Games Workshop. Well, Games Workshop, but we are here now, and you've made this old white dwarfer very, very proud. Play well, and uh, Grum says the uh, pretty much the lore is meant to be full of contradictions and devoid of fact on purpose. What are your thoughts on hearing hearing that? Uh, well, see, this is a thing that is often brought up by the opposition in these regards, that 40k never had law. It's always been contradictionary. This is bullshit. Uh, an abject lie. Because, well, I'll, I'll give you a link here to a web page. This is the Black Library, the uh, novel publishing arm of Games Workshop. They have been releasing books for decades. Um, there is so much law. There are so many books. There are so many stories in 40k that to say that there is no law here is nonsensical. We have dozens long series of novels. We have countless codexes, all telling us the same story. The lore of 40K remained practically perfectly consistent for 20 years. Like Amongst all of the various science fiction settings out there, 40K is one of the most internally consistent. So this idea that nothing matters because the company could potentially change something is absurd. And not to mention, if you don't have canon, if you don't have lore, then you don't have a setting, do you? Like, you must have some base fundament. Otherwise, why are you playing 40k? You might as well go out in the forest and pick some mushrooms and rocks and bash them against each other. Like, Because if the setting doesn't matter, surely that would be the exact same. Well, and I think that's the thing from the out, from an outside looking in. This is like, I don't know if uh, if Star Wars was like, yeah, everything that you know, it you know, it's all open to interpretation. It doesn't really well, matter. That is what they're doing. Well, that is okay. literally what Disney's doing. So it is, it is the perfect example because that is accurate. Right. Okay. Then then pick any any anything you'd ever want. Okay. Well, let's let's bring it like to sports. Right. If if if. If uh, the National Basketball Association was like, yeah, everything that happened before doesn't doesn't really matter. We're just going to do like a it's almost it almost feels like a hard reset of of this. If that yes, makes sense. And that, that is the point of it as well, because uh, to put it like this, this would be like you're talking about basketball and you go like, OK, who, who are the greatest players? Somebody brings up Michael Jordan. It's like mm -hmm. hey, he, he was great. And somebody goes, he Michael Jordan was a woman. Yeah. Right. Right. Come on. Excuse me. <laughs> it's like, yeah, he was always a woman. Uh, that, that's what's happening here. Because we know this wasn't the case. This hasn't been in doubt. Like, you can't just say, oh, the, the Lord has been contradictionary. No, the Lord has always been, the custodians have always been male. Like, it falls apart at the very first moment of inspection. If all of the pictures of Michael Jordan is as him as a man, if all of the recordings are of him as a man, if every voice recording sounds like a man you've got to kind of conclude that michael jordan was probably a man you would think you would think so for sure um but so what they're saying right now despite all of everything literally every point of media pointing to these custodies being males now they're saying nope by the way they've always been that way and that's yep. that's where the uh the the giant confusion like so Yes. So you as a fan, what do you, you, you say something about this and all of a sudden you are labeled a bigot now because, because you are just pointing out the obvious that they're lying to you. Well, that's the next step. Cause, um, you, you thought we were going deep on the 40 K. Oh God. No, now, now we're going to go deep because I can explain why this is happening. Yeah. That's what we're here for. Let's do it. Arch. Um, this is all part of the same movement. Uh, as I mentioned, I, uh, I did a video on this a couple of times now with one I did today, uh, breaking down the roots of this, because this is all a political agenda coming in here. Vanguard, BlackRock, they have a political agenda, which we know as ESG in DEI. But to really understand this, we've got to go back to 1930s Europe. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, with a man by the name of Antonio Gramsci. Have you ever heard of him? No. Oh, really? Dev hasn't Antonio told me about what? Gramsci. I'm surprised. Okay. All right, I'm doing a little digging. 
Antonio Gramsci was an Italian socialist uh, who was defeated by Mussolini, the other flavor of socialism in Italy, and imprisoned for the rest of his life. Gramsci was an absolute and utter genius of political philosophy. He was beyond clever. And he is the reason why this is happening to us today, because of the political doctrine that he created. And what was that? Um, he came up with the idea. So we got to go back to the 1800s now. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll stop there. <laughs> All right. Uh, but the various socialist uh, theories and thinkers of the time were like, okay, um, the world is unjust. The peasants will recognize this and the proletariat will rise up against the monarchies, against the capitalists, and they will create a more equal state, the communist state, the socialist state. But then years passed and years passed and years passed and decades passed and the peasants refused to rise up. And so a lot of the socialists are wondering, what the fuck's going on here? Because even the revolution in Russia, who, who started in the Russian revolution? It wasn't the peasantry. It wasn't the workers. It was Lenin, a man from Germany sent to Russia with the express intent of destabilizing Russia. And his revolutionaries were from the cities. In fact, the Russian revolutionaries would go on then to primarily persecute the farmers, the people who were supposed to be rising up. And the theory then was like, okay, how do we explain why the peasants aren't fucking revolting? Like, They'll be better off under socialism, surely. And uh, Mussolini decided to solve this problem by launching his own violent revolution. Uh, Gramsci, on the other hand, thought to himself, okay, the peasants aren't revolting because capitalism and democracies have built the world around them. They have, they have built the prison where people live in normality and think, okay, this is just how the world works now. Uh, why should I fight against it? Capitalism is normal. Democracy is normal. There's no point in resisting, especially as I'm pretty happy. I'm fat. I have a roof over my head. Life's good. Why would I, why would I risk all of this by picking up a gun? And so Gramsci thought that the revolution was impossible unless all of those structures of normalcy, all of the institutions around you, all of the ideas and thoughts of modern democracy needed to be replaced by socialist ideals. Only then, once the world had already been culturally captured, could the revolution commence. Okay. So what's That's this a lot to devour. What does that have to do with Warhammer 40K in the year 2024? Well, this was a very long-term plan because this idea of cultural capture began then and has been going on all the way up until now. Where the idea is you don't capture the institutions directly. You don't march up to the Capitol building and go, socialism, please. You go into a hobby and you go, wouldn't it be nice if this was more equitable and diverse? both socialist political points. And then you browbeat them. You go like, That's, it's, very, it's very racist what you're doing here. Shouldn't we fix this? And since our world of normality, racism is bad, we go, oh, oh, oh okay, sure. We, we've got some black people in here. We'll, we'll put in some more. And they go, okay, that's nice, but you're not speaking to the systemic systems of racism you've got here. And they're like, oh, okay, uh, how do we fix it? And then you bring them into the structures. Now they begin to change the values of society. Before, um, think of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. It was okay. an example of diversity and representation that was entirely natural. We were just like, okay, wouldn't it be funny if we had a black family who behaves basically like white people, and then we add in Will Smith, who's the ghetto kid. All right, cool. Everybody loved it. Everybody adored it. And we had a whole wave of diverse sitcoms with black characters, for example, and black stand-up comedians. Right. That was natural. This is not natural. Because 40K always has had black characters. It's always had women characters. And so to then go in and say, it's not enough, is the political ideology. Because then you get in, you get authority, you get power, and then you begin instituting further reforms. Until eventually you arrive at the position that Star Wars arrived at a few years ago, where the past must die, kill it if you have to, because now you're replacing what came before. This is the same reason why we're tearing down statues, for example, because we cannot acknowledge the past because the past is of the old system and we are trying to replace that system. We are trying to eradicate it entirely. Can we take a step back really quick? <laughs> Absolutely. 
who who started Warhammer? Was there one individual person? There were five people, I think, that started uh, Warhammer uh, Games Workshop back in 1983. Okay. Of those five people, they're the people who created the original lore of this. Yes. Uh, sort of, yes. What are What's their stance on this? Have they said anything publicly about this in, uh, in the last couple of days? Most of them are not around anymore. I think one passed away uh, recently, and the ones that aren't around are not really involved in this anymore. So most of the setting right now revolves around either the lore writers or the people who worked at Games Workshop in some form of capacity uh, previously. Like the example you brought up, for example. Merely having worked at GW gives you a certain gravitas on the discussion. Right. Because they say they, they were there. They were there. They know how this works. They dealt with it on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so so none of the original founders are there. Uh, case says Steve Priestley is still alive. So uh, I, I'd, I'd be curious. Okay, and uh, I guess Steve Jackson, and I, I don't know who these people are. I'm, I'm assuming that they are uh, they're the original folks behind it. I'd be yep. curious if somebody's reached out to them uh, and and said, "Hey, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on this? Well, you know, was has there ever been female custodes, uh, or custodies?" Um, uh, along here and, and to get their thoughts because at the end of the day this, this feels like <clears throat> this feels almost like if it you know going to like a, a larger ip like disney if uh if disney was like oh by the way uh mickey mouse is also uh gay <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. no no he's been the girl the boyfriend of uh minnie mouse for this entire uh, existence and they're like no 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 that's not minnie mouse anymore uh, that's it's actually Mouse. That's Max Mouse, and and uh, Minnie Mouse is now trans. That, that's kind of what this feels like. Yes, and of course, this is done for again political reasons. That's the key of it. This is, um, I um, I, I know this is a lot to uh, absorb <laughs> right off the yes, bat. This is a lot, but maybe I can um, I can I can bring up like a simpler example of this, right? Uh, the, the you know the original Pride flag, I'm sure. Right? Yes. Uh, Pride began as a movement mm -hmm. with genuine complaints. Okay, like we are being harassed. We want to have the same rights as everybody else. Okay, entirely fair enough. And it had a Pride flag that remained unchanged for about 30 years because most of their political grievances were simply just treat us like everybody else. Nothing wrong with that. Then, uh, in 2017, Philadelphia commissioned their own pride flag. That's the one with the black and the brown stripes on top. Now, what does race have to do with pride? Right. Nothing. Right. Like, the entire point of pride was that it was universally humanist. You could be gay and black or brown or yellow or white. It doesn't really matter. So now they added race into it. That was weird. And immediately thereafter, just a couple of years, the trans pride flag was invented. And then a year after that, the trans and intersex pride flag was invented. And just a couple of weeks ago, London created their own pride flag with two pyramids now eating into the pride colors. Actually, send it to uh, Blabs here. Uh, this is a beautiful illustration of what happens as the ideology grows more and more political. Because you're ever pushing forwards toward a more socialist future, a more equity, more diversity, et cetera, et cetera. Until eventually the original pride colors, they're now half of the flag. That's so stupid. Wow. Yes, it is. But it's, it's a brilliant representation of what happens. Pride starts out as non-political insofar as we just want the same rights. Nothing wrong with it. Then we add a little bit. Then we add a little bit. Then we add a little bit. And eventually the pride part of the flag is just going to be a little roundel up in the corner somewhere. Wait, how come black and brown are on there twice? <laughs> because oh, London is extra diverse. Flag, I think. Extra. All right. All right. Wow. This is it is will this flag be the the planet Earth flag soon? <laughs> well, aren't they trying to like combine all of Europe into one country or something like some weird ass crap now? The European Union, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, well, they're, they're trying to like rebrand it or something. Well, hold on, hold on, Arch. But you're just a white guy. 
you're just a white yeah. guy who loves Warhammer, you bigot, right? You're just a white guy. What about what? What do women feel about this, Blabs? <laughs> Blabs, you uh, you put that out there a second ago. Yes. Yeah, uh, well, I can share this now. Actually, hang on, because thank shout out to Skirmitar for sending me this. Skirmitar is a fan of yours, Arch. Um, apparently, a woman have actually been calling this out. So this is an account saying, I'm a female player. I have ultra marines, orcs, chaos marines, and I collect various minis that I enjoy, like Grimaldus, I'm assuming. From now on, I'll be printing, I'll be 3D printing, I will pirate your books and share them with all of my friends for free. This pandering is insulting and condescending. And then it turns out that they actually blocked her instead. So it's um there it is. Mm -hmm. Hang on, where is it? Oh, I've lost it. But yeah, supposedly she's been blocked now. She has been. For her I, uh, I have the screenshot. Yep, there it, it is. I used in my video too. Yeah. So Amazing. Warhammer is now, uh, anytime they see pushback, they'd rather just block it and say, no, no, they're, they're a gaslighting their audience and be like, no, 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 that doesn't exist either. By the way, you're a bigot, you know, on the, on the other yes. side of this. Uh, because all of the, let's be politically correct here, female identifying bodies I've spoken to, <laughs> they've all simply said that they, the, this thing, too, 40k is a very male dominated hobby because it's all about war, it's all about violence, it's all about conflict, right? It's sure. not the thing that normally appeals to the fair agenda. But all of them have said we already have female representation. We have Sisters of Battle, we have Sisters of Silence, we have female Imperial Guard. All of this already exists. So there is plenty of representation, but that's, again, not to the point of this. It isn't to have a little bit of representation. You must make all of it compliant with your technology, uh, technology, your ideology. Because if there remains any element of exclusivity in the setting whatsoever that benefits the non-left wing, that is negative. Because this is, again, a political ideology. See, again, perhaps this is the best example. If this was an honest observation, right? They were like, okay, we're genuinely worried that there's not enough female players, so we want a little bit of representation. All right, fair enough. Uh, what about an entire army of uh, of uh, females? Like, okay, but that's not good enough. Why not? Well, because we're pushing a political ideology here, and if we are ever happy, we can't continue pushing it. That's probably the most salient example of it. This uh, says, please mention repressive tolerance. What is that wow. a reference to? Repressive tolerance is um, probably the most effective tool of the progressive. Um, it was originally a term invented by Herbert Marcuse. Herbert Marcuse came up with this idea that it is not enough to be equal, because if we simply exist in the current day, then we're neutral. You know, nothing, nothing really goes forward. We must be actively political. And to be this, we need repressive tolerance. The idea for repressive tolerance is that you extend maximum charitability to your political allies. So whatever they say, you interpret it in the best possible light. So um, the feminist movement, when somebody holds up a jug saying male tears, you go, oh, that's just a joke. They don't mean it. When they say kill all men, like it's, it's, they're just kidding. They're just kidding. Then when somebody on not on your side says something like, okay, then kill all women, you go, ah, evil, misogynistic, hate crime, as you extend no charitability at all to the opposing side. And as you continue to do this, and you make this a natural part of the culture, obviously, everyone else who is outside, because 90% of people know nothing about politics, right? All they then will hear is people going, oh, no, no, feminists, good. They're just joking. But the men are oh, misogynist, evil. They're not joking. It's a way to color the dialect. And that's that's what you feel is happening here with the Games Workshop. They're, they're, uh, they're removing all those who are, uh, in, the, in the case of, uh, of this woman here, you know, um, she was saying, she was being yes. somewhat critical, just saying like, hey, I, I don't want this. And they're saying, no, no, no. We're going to block you out and, uh, you know, but but they'll obviously praise people who will go in and be like, oh, this is wonderful. And they yes. elevate the voices while blocking out the dissent. It also allows them to say things that are literally contrary. I'll give you uh, an example here. I'll send it to you, blabbering. Uh, 
blabs, blabbering blabs? Yes. Blabbering. Close enough for government to work. Right. Uh, Where you begin with Star Wars. So another example, they launch a Pride Month special. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Pride Month special. So this is um, uh, the other one I sent you, the first one. So many images, man. Oh, here we go. (laughs) I know this is some deep nonsense. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, that's what we're doing here. This is great. This is there great. You, go. you make this a little bigger, by the blabs. Can you? Uh, there you go. So, this, by definition, then by the left's definition, everything is political. This is political, right? Because it's hey, Star Wars. It has nothing to do with current year politics, but we're going to make it about current year politics by taking a our world celebration pride and slapping it on Star Wars, and we're going to put all of the stuff in it, the queer representation, all of that. Wait, a political oh. act, surely. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Doesn't Star Wars take place in a galaxy far, far away a long time ago? Isn't that the whole idea behind Star Wars? Is that, isn't that the whole idea? It is, but that is the politicization. And here comes the guy saying, don't make Star Wars political. And Star Wars then says, queer characters isn't political. How does one square this circle? Everything is political, but our politics aren't politics. Right. So this is Star Wars is like that their actual response. Wow. This isn't yeah, you yep. should see years ago. I don't know who was running their accounts, but they were running their mouths a couple of times. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, they even made Luke Skywalker. Wasn't he like bisexual now or some shit? Uh Luke Skywalker is officially queer, correct? Yes. As what? is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. Poor Craig, he's so lost. What are you talking about? What? I'm dead serious. They have said that Luke Skywalker is Here. gay, bisexual. Let me. I'll send you the picture of the uh, the the oh, fandom. Oh yeah, there we link. go. Mm-hmm, oh, mm-hmm. There you go. A fandom thing, or is this an official thing? This is fa- this is real. No, yep. Luke Skywalker, LGBTQ, uh, Obi Wan. Wait, Naren well. is a lesbian. <laughs> what is this? Wait. How can she be a lesbian? She totally had a boner for Cal Kestis in the game. I haven't played the second one, but oh, okay. <laughs> as is Tarkin. Yeah, well. that was so stupid, that one. And then he dies. So they literally made a character gay and then blow him up. <laughs> Tells yep. you everything. Wait, what? Yes, Craig, I, you are uh, so I am, not I'm, connected to this stuff. It's amazing how much you've missed out. So okay. blissfully ignorant. Yes, okay. Luke Skywalker's gay. Yeah. Bye, whatever it is. Here's the thing. Like, in, literally in what Star Wars world does it matter whose penis or vagina they're into? Right? Like, well, the and, thing is, he's not yeah. actually. He married. He had a wife. Her name was Mara Jade. They had children. It's fine. And there's the thing. It doesn't matter, but now you're beginning to see the the greater picture here. So what's actually happening? So Gramsci saw that our world was the normal world. Our capitalist world was the normal world, right? All of that was normal, and that's what we need to destroy. Well, having non-politicized things is a part of our normal. Having escapism is our normal. It is a way to disengage from politics. But if your express intent, as Gramsci's was, was to politicize everything, you can't allow that. You have to go into escapism, into hobbies, and go, no, Luke Skywalker was gay. Obi-Wan Kenobi was gay. It has nothing to do with Star Wars. It has to do with pushing the politics into it to make sure that there is nowhere you can go that is not politicized. And furthermore, the moment things have been politicized, then steps in Herbert Marcuse and says, everyone that is for me is good. Everyone who is against me is bad. Hmm. Well, that's what it sounds like. (laughs) That's what it sounds like. (laughs) It is. And again, the brilliance of this plan that Gramsci came up with was that none of this requires coordination. None of this requires some grand overarching conspiracy. There isn't some shadowy group of leftists agreeing to do this. It's all baked into the doctrine. Everything is political. Does this naturally? They don't have to push it. They don't have to have a boardroom meeting. This is simply how they think naturally. 
and you see, you know, you see this right here. Um, community managers at Warhammer have started blocking <laughs> accounts, <laughs> mocking or questioning the retcon of 40k yep. custodies. Um, this is Goblin Slayer says, "Are you adding misters, misters of battle, and brothers of silence too soon? Is that is that a uh, are those male only uh, groups as well?" Uh, the sisters of uh, the misters of battle are a play on the sisters of battle. The sisters of battle are an all female faction of warrior space nuns. Oh, so you just you'll wait and see in a couple of years, or maybe even next week, they'll be like, Oh, no, they're actually trans women, so that way it reverts to all men. Oh, absolutely, there, there probably will be. Uh, I sent you a picture of the sisters of battle there. Uh, they're all female, and the sisters of silence are all female. But again, this is where the repressive tolerance comes in. This is good because female representation is good. And therefore, we don't need to add in male representation because male representation is bad. Look at Craig. Wow. He's kind of mind blown. I think he's still mind blown on Luke Skywalker being gay. Well, <laughs> well uh, okay. But, but hold on. Let's, let's back up because they said that's not canon, right? No. Who, Luke Skywalker is not canon? No, no, no. They were talking to me. Saying that Luke Skywalker, that Luke and has a wife and children, they took that away. Disney. Oh, they didn't remove that. Yeah. On that. yeah, so that's no longer canon, and now he's gay, bisexual, whatever. They took away the nuclear family from uh, Luke Here. Skywalker. I understand that. Let me so let me just hammer this point home for you. Uh, this is Mark Hamill uh, quoted as saying, "Of course, Luke Skywalker is gay." <laughs> Like, just, just, in, just in case, for some reason, you didn't accept it at face value. Jesus. Ta -da! What, what the hell does that mean? Of course. Like, are you supposed to look at somebody and be like, I thought the whole idea was it that that uh, that you can't tell. Oh, right? but this is from 2016 when he was like hobschnobbling Disney's dick and everything. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Wow. I, I'm, I'm trying to... I'm trying to think about something that I'm like, uh, 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 let's say, okay, Street Fighter, right? I'm wearing a Street Fighter shirt. Uh -huh. I I'm trying to like correlate this with something. And like, if they were like, listen, Ryu, by the way, um, I know that he's peak masculinity and he walks around with his shirt off um, and he's only in it for the fight. Uh, but uh, no, not anymore. Uh, by the way, he's a woman. <laughs> and it's like, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I, that's, I get it. I get why people would be upset about this. I get the confusion of of uh, why people would look at this and be like, "I like you're clearly gaslighting here." And I, I think that's, you know, it, it, whether when it comes to Star Wars in particular, right? You have George Lucas. Has anybody gone to George, George Lucas and be like, hey, is Luke Skywalker gay? No, but he's literally come out and said that he likes what Disney's doing. What was it, like last month or whatever? So he's probably like, yeah, because he's, yeah, like, he's like the number one shareholder, isn't he? So he has to agree with Disney. So like, they stay afloat so he gets more money. Okay. But I mean, and this, is, this is the thing, too. I remember repressive tolerance. Even if you went to George Lucas and he said Star Wars is not gay. They would simply say, George Lucas doesn't matter, death of the author, fuck George Lucas. And if he says he is gay, they will go, yes, see, even the creator thinks he's gay. Right. There, there doesn't need to be any sort of a coherent position here. Like, that's not the point. It's a, uh, what, what is that famous Walsh quote? My, uh, my ideal is not to uh, lose as a socialist. It is to win as a socialist. There is no value in principled failure. Jeez, there's a lot here. Craig. So, okay, so I want to be really clear. It's not. It's not that there's females, like you're, you and other fans are not upset because there's females in this faction now. You're upset that they put them in there and then just straight up gaslit you because of it. Is that right? And is that is that the feeling that I'm getting from this? Well, uh, again, there there has never been an objection to having women in 40k. Uh, the Sisters of Battle have been around since oh god, when were they introduced? At least ten plus years now. I'm thinking. I've I've even had art made of Sisters of Battle because they're goddamn awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the more popular characters from the 40k Horus Heresy novels, or 30k correctly, 
female characters. Um, no one objects to there being women in 40K. Like, that's the straw man, because there have always been women in 40K. That have always been black people in 40K. Just like gaming. Gaming has always been diverse in right. the actual meaning of the sense. The problem is that we know why they're doing this. They're changing the law. They are lying to us. And we can see all the hallmarks of why this is happening. If, if this occurred in a vacuum, then nobody will, uh, they would just look at it and go, all right, weird, but I suppose. But when you know Antonio Gramsci, when you know uh, repressive tolerance, when you have seen this in Star Wars, when you've seen this in Marvel, when you've seen this in movies and television for 10 years now, this is not a neutral act. This is a malicious act. Who's doing it? Who's causing it? Is it the community managers? Is this is this the writers? Who is who are I mean, you, you know, you can say BlackRock and Vanguard, but somebody inside of Games Workshop is is making these decisions, whether it's through pressure from these companies or you know, but so who's pulling the like who's making the decisions to to make these changes? Do we have do we know that? Is there a CEO of the company that is that this is trickling down from? We, we do know more or less. Um, so again, the beauty of this political ideology is that it doesn't require centralized leadership. You simply take something like diversity and equity, because this attacks the idea of racism in the West, because we've always been very touchy on this subject. We don't like racism. We like everything to be equal. We like everything to be fair. These are our values. Uh, the Soviets use this against us constantly, because this is a point to attack us where we go like, we're not racist. And you can use this to push things. So when you simply say things must be more diverse, that sounds good to people on the, the face of it. And so simply saying we need diversity and then never stopping will inevitably push it towards more of a progressivist position. Uh, as for the people pushing it directly, they are largely the writers, first and foremost, and the community managers. We know for a fact that many of the writers are very woke, uh, we know even that there is a contract. So one of them mentioned um, during a little rant that there were certain things they were not allowed to talk about under the contract from Games Workshop. One of those things was me. I was mentioned by name in the contract they need to sign. They are not allowed to say my name in any tweet or in any official capacity whatsoever. Wait, hold on. Back up. <laughs> what? How yes. how how did how were you brought into this? I know we've talked about in the past that that you had to remove Warhammer from your name for legal actions mm -hmm. and and all that stuff because your original name was Arch Warhammer, right? Now yes. it's just Arch. How are you that? Are you that big of a thorn in the side? I am very I, infamous in this community. <laughs> what? But what, our, did, um... what did you do? Well, I've been arguing against this wokeist on the stuff for since the beginning, um, because I, every everybody else thought that forty k forty k can't be taken over by wokeism. It's so obviously right wing, and it is forty k as a setting is inherently right wing, and so everyone, like, this this will never happen. I was sitting there, I was looking at movies, I was looking at Star Wars, I was looking at Marvel, and going, no, no, uh, because they don't care about the setting. It, it, ha it, it doesn't need to make sense. Like, saying that Captain America is woke, which has happened, doesn't make sense. They'll do it anyway. They don't care about the internal consistency of the universe. They don't care about this being illogical. They care about winning. And anything else is, well, not relevant. And since I'm the one who's been talking about it probably the most and the most vehemently and the largest who's talking about it, I became the target. Uh, I know Games Workshop, for example, also bans anyone that they collaborate with from working with me. I had a sponsorship with uh, a World of Warships by Wargaming. I right. made the video, I sent it in, they accepted it, I put it up on my channel, and then I say received another email saying that I need to take it down. Why? Because Wargaming had received an email from Games Workshop saying that they did not wish to be affiliated with me in any way. That was... God, like five or six years ago, probably. Wow. That's crazy, to say the least. But, but th there had to have been a specific instance where, where Games Workshop 
we're like, that's the guy. He's the devil. We're, you're, you're, nobody can talk about this guy. And I, 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 was there a specific instance that they that they were that they felt that, once again? You're saying that they that in their contracts they kind they can't make reference to you as a human. Yes. They cannot mm-hmm. speak about me. I am he who cannot be named. Are you Voldemort? Yes. God. There's even uh, even rules on the official uh, uh, lore Reddit and the fan Reddits that I cannot be brought up. So you're telling me right now, if somebody was to go to Reddit, the the uh, the Games Workshop Reddit, the Warhammer 40k Reddit, and they're like, "Hey, did you see Arch on side scrollers today?" That it they would could be, be banned for that. Uh, yes. Uh, if you were to put one of my videos on the law Reddit or on the most of the fan law Reddits, it will be removed. Wow. So even us having this conversation, this is like, no, you can't you can't have that conversation. You're not allowed to talk about it. Like that doesn't seem very inclusive. It's, it it's not. Seem- but again, weaponized hypocrisy. My position good, your position bad. Wow. You're I'm a horrible so person. You're, you're clearly a horrible person, Arch. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I don't even know where to go with this anymore. I, I Usually I have like a nice little path I'd like to take here. Oh, I guess the next step is what's, I mean, what's next? What do you do? Do you actually, uh, can you fight this? Or is it, hey, we just need to make our own Warhammer 40K and, and do our own thing because ultimately... You know, the free market will decide. Or is it long past that point to where you will eventually just be crushed and you must submit? Like, what? how do you fight against this? Well, that's the million-dollar question, isn't it? So this, Sounds again, like gets very complicated. Question. <laughs> yeah. Um, back in the day, when this first started happening in 2014-odd, and the first, like, resistance began against it, like, Gamergate won, as I know Dev has given you the full timeline of that previously. Dev in the chat, by the way. What's up? Hello, Dev. So back then, none of us had any idea what was happening. Um, I I still, to this day, vividly remember watching a Sargon video uh, where he said, if only I could talk to Anita Sarkeesian, I could explain to her that video games aren't sexist. Which is ridiculous because Anita Sarkeesian doesn't care about sexist video games. Anita Sarkeesian cares about getting paid for criticizing sexist video games because they weren't interested in having a discussion. When they said video games are sexist, that wasn't them going like, hey, guys, I, I think I think I've come onto something here. They were saying it because that was the political thing to do. That was the oppressive tolerance in action. My opinion, good. Your opinion, bad. And it took us four or five years easy to begin unveiling the levels of this and figuring out that cultural Marxism was involved at all. It took forever. And by the time we did, all of our institutions were already taken over. Like, Star Wars was already fully taken over from the inside out. Games Workshop has been... I mean, Games Workshop has actively denounced their own setting now several times, saying that it's evil and racist and fascist, etc. They are already so deep inside of these companies that it will be very difficult to get them out. Now, Star Wars has kind of begun to turn around. Like Bob Iger said on several earning calls now that he wished to try and take the politics out of Disney because they're starting to see the losses piling up. And over a long period of time, the repeated failures of entertainment, box office flops, etc., will begin to turn companies around because as you keep losing money sooner or later, you're going to have to go, why aren't we earning anything? But... All of these large companies are enormous. It takes years and years even for them to notice. Because if one Pixar movie flops, all right, big deal. It, it happens. Two movies flops. Okay, what's happening? Three movies flopped. Now you're starting to look into it. And then you need to then go in and go, okay, I've identified what's happening. It's wokeism. People don't like it. Then you need to go through with all of the stuff you're already producing. And only then. After like years and years of this, can you start putting in programming that isn't woke? So all of this takes years. And Games Workshop is still profitable and will remain profitable for quite some time because it will take a very long time for them to go fully woke in a product sense. 
by the time that happens, and then by the time they start realizing that it's happening, it's going to be like four, five, six years before we see any like change. So it's the long march. Man. And to uh, to address the second point too, like making your own. Always, it's always a good idea to try to make your own stuff, right? Anyone who has a creative idea should try to push through it. Most people will fail. That is simply just the nature of the industry. But you should try. You, you won't know if what you're trying to do will be a success unless you try, right? Right. But how do you make another Star Wars today? How do you compete with Disney? How do you even begin to compete with Disney? You know? You don't have a billion dollars to burn on marketing. You, you, hell, even just the production of concept art is going to cost thousands of dollars. All of the hundreds of writing hours. You're not even, you're not, you're not even at the starting block yet. And Disney has spiraled the earth fifteen times. Right. Yeah, and it's it's extremely daunting for sure. Do you, are there any Warhammer? Are there any Warhammer competitors? I mean, you said it yourself. This, like, this is the like. This is like. What's the market share of Warhammer 40k and Games Workshop? Is it, you know, eighty percent? Not like. What? What are we talking here? Uh, more. Um, there, there are no competitors. Uh, the only things that exist are niche games. Like uh, Bolt Action has a little bit of a following. Uh, Kings of War has a little bit of a following. But none of these are. These don't have their own stores. They don't have their own like big market audience. Half of the time, they'll play games in the Games Workshop stores. Like the market share of Games Workshop is crushingly large. Um, they they are wargaming. Wow. But the fact like, that they're bring up BattleTech, like that's a good example. Like dude, BattleTech, BattleTech used to be bigger than Warhammer. Now. It, it is, again, like a niche of a niche. Hmm. Well, I understand that I understand that the problem, right? I see the see it, and I'm looking for the solution here. Like, that's that's where my mind goes. How do you solve this? How do you create an alternative? You know, even if you even if you go in and you own, you know, 0.1% of the market, maybe that can eventually become 0.3% of the market and then 1% of the market. Um, and and you know you grow but the reality is is that nothing is going to change unless people speak with their wallets you mentioned bob Iger right, and him saying like well, well we we had this many this many misses in a row we got to take a look at things and we got to kind of remove our our thought process and political nature from from our movies until people like not just kind of sort of remove themselves from from warhammer like all the way remove themselves from the hobby and spending money and not supporting it, will anything be changed here? No, um, it has to be with the wallets. Um, now, the, the thing there is it's a very long-term thing again because voting with your wallet uh, is good in a small context. Like if, if, you're, um, if there's 100 people that shop at the same store, you choosing to not shop at the store is a 1% drop in sales. But Disney, that makes a movie that releases in like how many thousands of cinemas, your wallet is 0 0.0000000000 something percent, right? Right, right. Which is why you need to change the culture. Like that's what I've been working on. I've been trying to spread awareness of the culture of wokeism, the ideas of it, why this doesn't happen in isolation, why this is all part of the same political agenda. And that's why we need to stand up against it. Because you need to make the very idea of woke, the word itself needs to become poisonous. And we have gotten very far in doing so. Like woke is now generally recognized by the normal populace to not be a good thing. It's, it's a curse word now. And that's how you work with the wallet today, by changing the culture, by going, if, if the movie has diverse in it, if it's equitable, equity, ESG, DEI, whatever, people look at them and go, I don't know. I don't, I don't like that. We need to turn those words into the Nazis of 2024. The incredibly inclusive Nazis. <laughs> Unironically. Okay. Have yeah. you heard about a, a, a company called Black Girl Gamers? 
Oh yeah, uh, we're very familiar with Black Girl Gamers. Yes. You Absolutely. will probably have seen their site then, because they are a, a DEI company that promises to introduce DEI equity and inclusion into sites, right? Yes, yes. And yet they themselves proudly boast they're 100% Black-owned, they're 100% female-owned. How diverse is that exactly? Yes, extremely di diverse, both in uh, demographics and, of, and in thought, I'm sure, which is great. Absolutely. You know? And again, repressive tolerance. Herbert Marcuse, hundred percent minority operated. Fantastic! That's incredible. You're fighting the white supremacy. One hundred percent white operated. Ooh, racist, bigoted, cruel white supremacist. Well established. One hundred percent. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's there's a lot there. Is there anything? Is there any closing before we get to super chats? Are there any <laughs> any like closing remarks you want to say about this? Like, what's the next step? Your general thoughts. Obviously, you have a. If you want more on this, you, you said, Arch, you just released a video over on your channel. Uh, we'll make sure we link that in the description. But is there anything you want to close with before we get on to super chats? Okay. Um, I, I'd like to steal a quote from the opposition, from the progressives here. Uh, Do not let this discourage you, let this radicalize you. Because that's what you need to do. You got to look at it and you got to be like, we're not losing. That's not the lesson you need to take away. We are simply going to need to fight on a little bit harder. Make your own stuff. If you have the resources and the time to do so, make your own stuff. In fact, I am making my own stuff. I have a super secret project uh, where I am making my very own war game setting for myself. You know, And not everyone can do that. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of money. Uh, but if you can, and you have the interest and the passion, absolutely consider doing it. Even if there is, even if you're going to have to go up against Disney, even if you're going to have to go up against the Goliath, it's better to do something than nothing. Well, you know, it's funny because I, I mean, it's not funny, but this is exactly why, like the message that you have is exactly why I'm doing Take Games Back. And mm -hmm. like, that's, it's it's a first step right like Absolutely. when i think of the game awards they have a decade on us right and i think of that as a as an industry product and what we're doing is going to be a consumer product it's a product for the gamers not for the people in the industry and you have to create a parallel economy and that's the entire idea behind it so yeah. is it going to be perfect no but you got to at least try and you could fail, you know, absolutely. But you got to at least try. And uh, I think it's important that people in, in the Warhammer community and people in the video game space, people in, in this whole space, you got to, you, you have to at least try. And if you fail, fuck it. Who cares? You tried. And that's the most important thing. So there you go. All right. Um, I'd like to remind everybody. Um, we're we're going to go to Super Chats here. By the way, your support has been spectacular today. Lots of questions, Arch. There's a lot, a lot of stuff in here for you. Um, but coming up in a little bit after the show, I was thinking I was thinking at 1.30. I don't know. We may take a little bit longer. But in about 45 minutes or so, uh, I'm going to be over at sidescrollers.locals.com watching Lord of the Rings for the first time today. So uh, make sure you guys go over there and find, us, find me over there. It is free to sign up. It's going to be free to watch. Um, but uh, it's going to be happening here in about 45 minutes, maybe an hour, depending on how quickly I can eat after the show. Uh, but we appreciate all your support, and we appreciate you guys heading over there as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, Blab, let's get to it. Okay. Saro, I want to say his name is. If we're making up lore, I want Ordo Blabsius. I don't know what that means. Anyway. There you go. <laughs> Sonic, Arch, you ever see the Warhammer 40K-inspired Furry Crusades by Flash Kits? I have. They're very funny. They're very good. All right. Tiki the Hut. Arch, ever thought about making the swap from Warhammer 40K to Conflict 47? 28 millimeter alternative history World War II. We have big stompy robots, zombies, and werewolves. I've seen it. It does look very cool. But again, you're competing with about 30 years of lore. Hmm. Sarah comes back and says, Arch's people invade the United Kingdom. That's kind of close. Is it, though? Uh, Xander, which Warhammer Commander desk, deck should I get? 
That's Magic the Gathering, isn't it? Uh, my only advice there is burn all of your magic cards and never buy them again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Honey Badger says, Drunk Blabs. I am sober. Uh, yeah, we need to get we need to get drunk blabs. That'd be great. <laughs> no. Dermy, member for 12 months. Blabs, the entirety of America is actually Texas. Except for the West Coast. That is commie land. Yep. Okay. Nissan, time to pirate Space Marine. Looks sick, but according to X, they don't want my money. Mm. Yep. Shaka Zulu, it was great meeting, hanging out with you in Vegas, Craig. Now you can visualize the face you want to punch when I trigger you in chat. Cheers. <laughs> there you go. Love it. Thanks, Shaka Zulu. Nightmare, Arch somehow sounds even more like a posh Brit than Sargon does. LOL. I have been told this frequently. That's why Craig always thinks you're from <laughs> England. Right. Cody, uh, GWX account comments are funny. Should read them. Okay. Thanks, Cody. <laughs> Hometown hero. I got day drunk when I was younger. Blabs, you're like 20 years old. What do you mean, young? No, I'm going to be 28 in like a month. But um, yeah, when I was 20, it was day drunk. Uh, Reverend Norris, honestly, disappointed with the 40K YouTubers like Bricky and Luton. Not surprised, yet disappointed all the same. Too few base 40K lore channels. You'll see that in every single IP where there's so many people that you're disappointed with. Name them. And, it come, it, and, and what's it come back to every time? Access. They want mm -hmm. access. They, and they, and yes. sub count and everything, yeah. Josh says, my mom used Brain Sage to parent me. Brain, oh, brain, brain sage. Age. Brain sage. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, brain sage. I'm like, is that type of plant sage? <laughs> um, anti pattern. Hey, Arch, would you agree that using girls for custodes, custodes, Custodi. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, would be a waste because their physical potential would be lower than males. The Imperium wouldn't waste the resources. Absolutely true. It's the same argument why there wouldn't be female space marines. Uh, making a space marine is really goddamn difficult, really goddamn dangerous, and the failure rate is like 90%. You need the absolute most physically fit individuals imaginable, and even they die 90% of the time. To use those resources on someone with an even lesser chance of survival? Uh, literally, they're using the most valuable resource in the entire Imperium to do this, gene seed. So... It wouldn't make sense. Okay. All right. We'll go on. Mercenary. I still have my copy of Brain Age. Still have NES. Nice. Mm. Uh, Matthew says, you should watch the video of Boston Dynamics reveal of its new generation Atlas robot. Why do you make it look like the Terminator? Why do they not make it look like a Terminator? Sorry. I'm... We'll probably get to that tomorrow. It would be too obvious. Yeah. We, we, I saw that. We'll probably get to that tomorrow for sure. Optimus Jedi. Arch, can you explain sounding <laughs> pencils to the host? Is there some deep lore? Adeptus Custodes, our male. <laughs> so the, this this was a... Um, we were playing New World, the MMO, uh, and it was boring. It wasn't very good. And in chat, somehow, somebody brought up sounding, which is the action of uh, pushing a metal instrument down your penis hole. Oh, for purposes of masturbation. Oh. And since we were very bored and it was very late, this was very funny to us. And so we started thinking about what we could shove down our penis holes and it became a whole thing, including pencils. Oh, well, thanks for sharing that, Arch. Appreciate that. Entirely hopefully, normal. Hopefully it works out for you. <laughs> Labs, Thank your you. thought. I got nothing except this. <laughs> Thank you. Now, okay. now we know. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> How do you recover? Reverend Norse, best is to boycott games workshop altogether. But if one must feed them, buy Xenos factions instead of Custodes. Hope the stock taking a lasting hit. To be clear, you don't have to buy anything. You don't have to buy anything. And they say, if you must feed them, no, you don't you don't have to fight. You have to stop. You gotta stop. Otherwise, you're still giving them money. 3D mm -hmm. printer go burr. James, hell, Arch, if you were the imper imperator of the Great Crusade to liberate GW, who would you? Who would be your 20 Primarchs and why? Ah, uh, hum, 20 Primarchs. The original ones. Hmm. I can't, see, I'm sure I know what you mean by that. Who would I pick in real life? But uh, I've already spent too much time talking about Gramsci, so you'll excuse me <laughs> jipping out on the, uh, the answer there. <laughs> 
Um, Alinda says, when I heard the Custodes news, I had a funny mental image of someone breaking the news to Henry Cavill while he was working on the plot for his Amazon show. He then called GW all of the gamer and Melanie Mac words he could. <laughs> I feel bad for Henry. Everything he touches goes to shit. But I feel like that's like our story too. Every, all the IPs. Our uh, story? You mean yeah. the spoilers? No, like ours, like fans. That's our uh -oh. story. We all have everything turning to shit. Mage says Blobs is too innocent for Scandinavian cuisine. Clips galore. Yeah, I'm gonna we'll clip that one. That one's good. <laughs> um, Axe Prime Arch pops on. I was expecting to rent it about 40k, and I get decapitated sheep heads only on side scrollers. Damn right. Hey, stay informed. Stay informed. <laughs> Alan, wore Crocs in a bar once again. End of the night, it was slightly raining, and I slipped and split my head open. Outside of wear at home footwear, don't recommend. Oh my God. That's right. How? Jesus Christ. Lord, they are slippery. Your head's when okay. They are. This is what I'm saying. They're shit shoes. Don't wear them unless you gotta go, like, I don't know, go get the mail. <laughs> Um, Asthma again. Arch deals with woke bullshit on the daily. Eating a sheep's head off a plate is a layup. <laughs> <laughs> Reed Fox Media. Howdy all. I see Arch in the title. I click on it. Well, thank you for hey, joining us. Thanks, Reed Fox. Dev and Razor, Razor Fist on Side Scrolls when? Oh my God, that would be so artistic. <laughs> <laughs> How artistic are they? Are they? Very. <laughs> Douglas, a lot of Southeast Asian cooking uses fish sauce, which is mostly rotten fish. The Romans had garum, which is similar. Rotten fish have a fair bit of MSG. Thanks, Douglas. <laughs> Sly, I've seen Shogun. Letting meat out to rot doesn't end well. Thanks. Alan comes back and says, I once saw, I once was at someone's house and they put flaming hot Cheetos on the pizza. I'm not Italian, but I was offended by the amount of disrespect. Put pineapple on it, at least. Thanks, Alan. What's your stance on pineapple on pizza, Arch? The uh, same as bananas on pizza. No. Thank you. You you can stay. <laughs> All right. Damien, Gorilla Grip, Gershwin. How is the Warhammer dating scene? Hot chicks or... Uh, mostly men. About 99%. <laughs> mostly dudes. <laughs> Hometown hero. It won't stop with custodial space marines are next. Cadeth mm. uh -huh. Gaming. Henry Cavill collects paints and plays custodial and has a reputation for sticking with the lore. They are nerfed, emasculated, and he has stuck he, and he has to suck it. Oh my. Um well. Okay. I Poor Henry. Appreciate that. <laughs> Gear. The amount of GW lies is infinite. Yes. Maple Invictus. Everyone knows there were two legion of space marines that have been wiped out. Watch Games Workshop, GW, announced the two primarchs for those legions were female. Mm. Wouldn't surprise me. Tonushi. The Arab Golden Age of Science ended because their philosophy switched to none of it matters since the creator can be as arbitrary as he wishes. Ar arbitrary, yes. Arbitrary. I mean, that's a that's a good point. I mean, if God is the only one who can make stuff up, why would you bother? Mm. Boog. <laughs> I think. <laughs> well, yeah, well, we all know Jordan is a man. Blue-eyed white man. Yes. That's right. Michael Jordan. <laughs> Mercenary. I said it before. This is about controlling the world. Mm. Thanks, Mercenary. Uh, Mercenary comes back and says, if they can if they can't control it all, they will destroy it. Isn't that positive? <laughs> Mage says, Battletech went through its own unreliable narrator phases decades ago. It was called Dark Age, and it sucked. Flopped so hard that they had to create a prequel just to retcon it into making sense. Yee. Thanks, Thanks Mage. Mage. Patriot, holy shit, for $50, says, great interview. Thank you very much, Patriotic Gestalt. Hey. Give it up for Arch, everybody. Yeah. You know, and, and walking me through this in autistic detail because yeah. uh, and, and just blowing my brain. It's, it's just insane. insane. Thank Next, you. Next, we that. should do like a whole, we should bring Arch back for Star Wars and just blow his mind on every little thing that Disney has done. No. <laughs> Why not? You don't know it. You got to learn, son. Yeah, I know. Sujad says a lot of the weird DI SJW nonsense group stems from communist social engineering attempts. Look up Yuri Bezmenov interviews and the naked mm -hmm. communists. Both are on YouTube. Thank you, Sujad. 
Um, Spartacus, ever heard of Saul Alinsky? Chicago-born socialist who is a pupil of Al Capone's gang, stirred up racial tension, labor issues. His book on radicalization is taught to activists, influenced Hillary Clinton and Obama. Huh. Thanks, Spartacus. And by the way, it's Al, it's Al Capone Labs. Al Capone. Al Capone. Al Capone. Okay. <laughs> a feline named JJ. Arch going full Putin on Tucker. Love the historical context. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Feline. We must begin in 1600s Russia. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gollum Wolf. How long till GW quietly abandons this stuff when they stop making money, I guess? Yep. I, I hope soon, but I doubt it. All right. Rebound says, it's not about representation. It's about taking what is yours and making it theirs. They are Aldous Huxley's crusaders. They are terrible people. Thanks, Rebound. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, T2Bin... Oh, what the hell? I'm too autistic to read this. T2Bin Upin it. T2Bin you pin it. Oh, my God. Ugh, okay. <laughs> Arch called this bullshit happening in 2015 and broke down why making any our startest a woman is ignorant of medical science and a violation of GW's own lore and canon. What idiots? Have a great day. Well, thank you. T to bin you pin it. <laughs> this is let me go on. This one time a band camp, GW has taken an inch, and now they'll take a mile. We can give them the benefit of the doubt, they'll stop here. I hope 40k fans learn from history. Thank mm -hmm. you, band camp. Um, D7 Origin, is it time for another GW boycott? I have been playing uh, Warhammer for 22 years. I already saw trouble brewing when Rick Priestley left the company in 2009. He was the co-owner of GW, and that says a lot. Thanks, D7. Pastor Dave, if you get time, it's an 11-minute video to dissect. Dr. Phil has a DEI expert on a show and puts her in a place rich white women knows best. Mm. Don't they all? Potato Radio. Great name. The question is, why would you want women associated or up front in a game where everyone is some flavor of bad, violent, corrupt, and or stupid as its intentional pitch black satire? Grimdark. Irony. Because it's popular. Simple as. Like, again, it has nothing to do with representation or positive representation. Games Workshop is a big company with a lot of customers and a lot of social influence, and they want it. Simple as. All right. Dark Side Droids, what you're missing is that they're trying to rewrite history. As far-fetched as their revisions are, they are forcing that belief system on you. I don't think we're missing that That's one. Funny. I think we see it. Um, Alex says, was I just tricked into social studies class? Yeah, but it was a fun one because Arch was teaching it. <laughs> uh, free Ropper. Thanks to the person who mentioned Diversity in Dragons yesterday. It's an awesome channel. Diversity in Dragons is to tabletop RPGs with side scrolls is to video games. Would be an awesome guest on side scrolls. Well, I did put them in the guest list. I just haven't gotten a chance to look at them yet. And by the way, uh, they also came in with that exact same message with a direct donation. So thank you for that. Appreciate mm. that. Mason, don't let the GW Sims guest let you. Custodes has always been depicted and referred to as male. All the way back in the Rogue Trader rulebook from 1987, they are referred to as these men. Mmm. Thank you, Mason. Rebound says, that crossed my mind too. My bet is they'll retcon that Lady Custodes to be trans M MTF. Still technically lore accurate, but progressive. That's what I'm saying. Male space. Mac, friendly reminder that Mark Hamill pressed his daughter-in-law to abort his future grandchild. Correct. Jesus. Okay. Craig is learning so much about Mark Hamill today. <laughs> uh, boog. Sadly, the majority of Craig's, and they don't know. Majority of Craig's? <laughs> yeah. I, or Craig's. I, listen, I, I said this all along. Like, I, I, I am the average dude, you know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Like, I, you know, I, uh. I know about some of this stuff. I am passionate about what I'm passionate about, but when it comes to like the, the, that's why I like asking about this and being the common guy in a situation like this. See, we should totally do a Disney deep dive on everything that they've done from Marvel to Star Wars. I think I'd blow your mind again. Zedek Arch is the boogeyman of Warhammer. They hate this man because he speaks the truth. Correct. 
Orthodox monks, Proverbs 16, 18, before destruction comes pride and before fall, a haughty spirit, really describes a lot of DEI industry people. Humility ditched for self-gratification of virtue signaling. Thank you, Orthodox monks. J.M. says, sisters of battle are women because the state religion is not allowed to man any army. But if you identify as female, that's totally fine, I guess. Short Fat Otaku, aka Dev, talk about Antonio Gramsci and I am summoned. I did a one hour video analyzing his ideas. TLDR, cultural subversion makes communist revolution possible. Thank you, Dev. Uh, Mason, it's not BlackRock directly. Companies like GW implement DEI hiring practices and end up with a bunch of activist employees who push these agendas. Mm. Boycott Warhammer Plus. <laughs> Hail <laughs> Archchrist, our Lord and Savior. He died for our sins, and thus the crusade carries on. <laughs> Thank um, you. Uh, Kite the Twin Blade. Love your content, but a friend a few years ago said they called you a Yahtzee. What, what was their basis for that, Arch? I have no idea. Uh, many things, I'm sure. Well, being in opposition to the left makes you a Yahtzee, but... My greatest crime um, was a series of Discord messages that leaked, where I did, amongst other things, quote black comedians from the 2000s. I'm sure you can imagine how spicy that was. Wow. Well, yeah, I heard about that. You said that on uh, your first time on. Scout, my favorite part about these political discussions is remembering that Craig is just a normal dude that wants people to be happy. He just yeah. wants to watch My Little Pony, guys. That's all. Shut up, Blaz. I don't want to watch My Little Pony. Sherry, oh, I'm sorry, Bluey, whatever. Bluey, that's right. Yeah. Timio. Hey, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, this is me. I I represent the bear represents me right here. It is normal men. What do you mean, normal men? We're just innocent men. <laughs> what the hell is even that? What is that, Craig? <laughs> the greatest meme in the world. I am the normal man. I'm just an innocent man. <laughs> what did we just watch? Arch, have you seen that? that before? I have not. <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> we'll watch that another time. Why is he keep? <laughs> I don't understand what's so funny. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> just keep going. Go ahead. Okay. Didn't you? Arch's full name is Archaon the Ever Chosen. Or H A on? Archaon? Archaon? Archo. No one knows how to pronounce that. Not even the GW people knows. Oh, well, I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> um, look at Craig, he's dying. By the way, Craig, we can hear that. <laughs> Asmin Asmugan says, Wait, you can hear like, then? Even I heard it before. I just okay. heard it before. Okay. Asmugan, stop watching it. I can see you. Can relate to the struggle to start up my war game, barely able to make progress given the budget requirements just for concert art. Look at him. Look at him. Oh my god! What's wrong with you? <laughs> He's shaking! <laughs> We're just normal men. What do you mean, normal men? We're just innocent men. <laughs> <laughs> she sounds like she's farting. That's the funniest bit. <laughs> the music starts up, it's so funny. <laughs> We're playing for H2Q a little bit later on. So if you'd like to play H2Q, email soon. If you see that, please don't go join again. What? It's so freaking funny. Uh, okay. Uh, anyway. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a UK kids show where they... <laughs> keep going. Keep going. I don't even know if I read this one. We're going to read it again, I think. I can't relate to a struggle to start up my war game. Barely able to make progress given the budget requirements just for a concept art. Thank yep. you very much. All right. Dave, to get, I don't know, tip. That Italian socialist has gotten played. The people pushing his, this currently, DEI and such, are the most certainly only world elitists that do not care about the proletariat. LOL, what a chump. Thank you, Dave. Kite, the twin blade, at Craig. To give you an idea how huge GW and Warcraft is, Warhammer is, Warcraft, Starcraft, World of Warcraft, and Blizzard itself would not exist if not for Warhammer and 40K. Is that true? This is the deep lore. Um, 
Back in the day, Games Workshop hired a then little-known video game company by the name of Blizzard to try and make a PC game version of their setting, What I'm Fantasy. Uh, games Workshop didn't like what they saw and told them to stop it. Uh, Blizzard told them to shove it and then released Warcraft 1. Wow. Wow. That's, that, that is nuts. Hmm. And something that GW executives cry themselves to sleep about every night, I have right, no doubt. Right. right. Wow. Noob nut. Okay. There's secondhand battle tech. Unlike Warhammer 40k, you don't have to buy the last latest minis and books to play the latest edition. Thank you, noob nut. Joey, wokeness destroys everything it touches. When are companies going to realize this? One day. When, they when it hits their money. pocketbooks. Mm. Daniel, we're barreling into socialism and it, it appears unavoidable. Abandon all corporate garbage. Create new hobbies. We've been taken over. No shots fired. Mm. <clears throat> Blobs of Tower charge $5. A moderate 3D printer costs about the same as a decent 40k armor 3D printer. Gobber. I like pickles, violence, and tentacles. Yay! I'm glad uh, you like tentacles. So real quick, Blobs, we're going to let's let's we're going to do a square up. I want to I want to hit a few of these big uh, super chats and mm -hmm. direct donations and rumble rants. And then we're going to need to do a square up because if I'm going to get if I'm going to get a chance to watch Lord of the Rings today, I need to, <laughs> we need, we need yes, to finish sorry. up. So, mm -hmm. uh, Blabs, can you do can you make sure we uh, get all the uh, super chats that I, that I don't read here? And uh, so we can do a square up later on. Mm -hmm. uh, but first, Dalamar came in with the fifty dollar super chat says. Uh, GW is the last man standing alone in uh, with Wizards of the Coast of all the role playing and, and gaming companies of the 80s and 90s. The graveyard is full of large RPGs slash minis minis companies. I was there. I had lunch with VP of uh, GW. They do not care. They charge us. They charge us more because they can. Wow. Thanks, Dalimar. Appreciate that. That is spectacular. Look at that. You're going on that wall, my friend. And uh, it's a damn shame as well. Uh, Master Gawa came in and says, I know Arch had a Kirsha on before, but I feel I feel he could help enlighten her a little bit about how ESG's DEI bridge is just leftist agenda in action. Please enlighten her on the political past of this stuff on a future side scrollers. Um, yeah, it'd be great. Like obviously uh, we have a lot of friends and uh pairing you guys together would be a real interesting conversation for sure. So uh, if you're open to it, Arch, let us know. Bring you on with Kirsha. Sure, Kirsha. I like Kirsha. Uh, thanks, Master Gawa. Appreciate that. Uh, and then we got TC Josh says, I, I hate hate that I recently got into 40K, spending a lot of mo money building and getting uh, my GSC army together. Now all this crap makes me makes me want to sell off all my stuff. <laughs> I'm sure you're not alone right there. Uh, Sigrun came back and says, I know someone who suggests that the lore is actually flexible enough to allow for female custod custodists to enter. Uh, but the problem is that is that the way GW implemented it? Retcon, what are your thoughts? No. I don't think there's enough give to justify female custodians in the law. Um, I don't think so. But again, the simple fact is all of this is obviously made up at the end of the day. If the company wants to change it, they will change it. And there's fat little we can do about it. But when they change it and then lie about the reason why they change it, like that's the big thing. Because there, there's no... If DW was a neutral company, this change wouldn't make any sense. It is for external reasons, and that's what I have a big problem with. Dax also became as a brand new member. Thank you so much, Dax. That's spectacular. Tyrant over on Rumble says, Good day to side scrollers and Arch. Arch, it finally happened. None of us wanted it, but GW went and did it. I'm so tired of companies updating for modern audiences that isn't there. Uh, Blake came in and says, my favorite My Little Pony is Cheese Sandwich. Oh, okay, okay, sounds good. Uh, dude <laughs> says, remember Weird Al has cucked some bronies uh, with his self-insert character being being put in the official show and being in a relationship with one of the characters. Oh, that's interesting. I did not know that. The tyrant says, drunk, drunk scrollers sounds fun. Might help Craig with a stutter. Uh, I hope that these rants and buying the All-Star shirt helps as well. Yes, very much so. Speaking of, Red Strider picked up the brand new shirt as well as 60 Watt. Says, uh, love the show, guys and blabs. Thanks, 60 Watt. Appreciate that. Both picking up the new Side Strollers All-Stars t-shirt available only till the end of the month. And uh, Delta says, hey there, Arch. As someone who has uh, Warhammer paper books but knows nothing about the lore, 
Is the female introduction actually nefarious or is it fanfic people in leadership? I'm I'm seeing a lot of fan art, quote unquote art, that looks very different from the figures. Uh, malicious, absolutely. Because the thing is, people like Domi Mommies. Fair enough. I like Domi Mommies too. But adding in Domi Mommy custodies will neither increase nor decrease the amount of Domi Mommies out there. You can have the one without the other. They can't starve you came in with the five over on Rumble. Says, mark my words, they're going to try and say uh, Necrons are, non non are non-binary next. What are Necrons? I mean, uh, Necrons are the uh, undead faction of 40k. They're robot skeletons. And I suppose you could, uh, you know, go with the modern day interpretation and say that we can't tell uh, genders apart by their skeletons. So, sure. <laughs> Uh, Shane came in with the 10 over on Rumble says, if you haven't yet, Craig, you should look into Flash Git's uh, video called Destiny is Fabulous. It really explains today's world in gaming. I promise it doesn't include the N-word. Hashtag Fire Blabs. <laughs> Thanks, Shane. Appreciate that. Uh, can you look for that, Blabs, please? Uh, Destiny is Fabulous by Flash Gits, G-I-T-Z. Uh, just put that in the in notes so I can check that out later. Um, Mighty Megatron says pineapple, pineapple, pineapple on pizza is delicious. Blabs, the juices just flow out the head, out like heaven. All right, don't make it weird. Fake news. Uh, John came in with the five. Says, uh, not sure if you know if you know, but in in Street Fighter, Poison is unofficially a guy since in Final Fight it wasn't acceptable to hit a woman. So Capcom uh, considered her a man also seth the bad guy in street fighter 4 is now a woman in street fighter 5 thanks for that john all right thanks for the heads up and uh helping me lose a little bit more faith in society all right we're gonna square up the rest of these super chats we got 20 more to hit we'll hit those another time but uh arch i want to thank you for your time spending a little extra time going into this deep dive here on uh on this insanity i get it i totally understand the uh criticism attached to it uh is there anything you want to close with before we before we close out uh, thank you very much for having me. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry I had to go back to the 1800s on you there. <laughs> uh, which channel? You, you, you have two channels. Um, which channel would you like to uh, to tell everybody about? I mean, we'll obviously put links to both in the chat, but uh, is there the, a... Uh... The Archcast one. That's the most relevant to this stuff anyways. All right. Sounds good. Just uh, if you want to search The Archcast on YouTube, make sure you go over and subscribe. 86,000 subscribers strong over there uh for arch so make sure you guys go over there and uh hit the subscribe button as well as hit the subscribe button here if it's your first time tuning in we're live monday through friday at 11 a.m central time um with that said we're going to square up the rest of these super chats uh another time i'll do a special stream just for that thank you guys very much for each and every one of those i cannot tell you how much we appreciate that please open a new tab right now and head over to side scrollers.locals.com i'll be live in just about 15 minutes over there i'm going to eat and go live and we're going to watch i'm going to watch lord of the rings Fellowship of the Ring. Is that right? Fellowship of the Ring? Is that the correct titling, Blabs? Don't, don't give me that stupid look. Um, and uh, I'll be live in 15 minutes over there. It is free to become a member over there. If you want to support, you can. But once again, uh, you create an account over at sidescrollers.locals.com and uh, watch the movie with me. Uh, once again, Arch, thank you very much. Blabs, great job today. We'll see you guys later on. And remember, people are going to try to keep you down. Don't let them. You guys got a goal. Go get it. We're just normal men. You guys have a great day. I'll see you guys shortly. Bye-bye. <laughs> Fertility!